So what up? My name is Alex Gong, head coach for the Fairtex Muay Thai fighting team. Today we're going to work on the basics, the elementary footwork, movement, and hand position of Muay Thai. Understand the basics is essential in Muay Thai. Everything that you do from this point on will rely on these basics that you're going to learn today. The fundamentals are everything. Muay Thai is a simple art. It keeps the, the, the technique simple so we can focus on what's really important, balance, movement, and timing. As you, as you work through these drills we're going to work on today, pay close attention. These are the things that will carry you and you'll be using for every technique you'll be using in the future from the first round to the fifth round. Let's get going. <coughs> okay, now we're going to work on some of the basics getting started. First of all, let's work on our body position. Keep your body nice and relaxed. Before you get going though, I want to remind you, always take the time to warm up. And, and at Fairtex, we take a philosophy of we warm up to prevent injuries. We do a lot of shadow boxing here, a lot of jumping rope, even 20 minute jogs before we get going. Now in Thailand, it's really warm, so it's easy for us to keep our bodies warm. In the United States, it's not as warm, so it's important for us to keep the body warm by particular warm ups. Towards the end of our training, it's important to, to do the stretching. We emphasize more of our stretching and massage after our training sessions, therefore we loosen the body up, so the next day when we come to train, we're not as sore. So the general philosophy is warm up to prevent, prevent injuries, stretch and massage to prevent soreness. And that's, that's what we try to do. Always be safe though. No matter what, we always try to treat ourselves as though we have the, 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 the world title fight tomorrow, and this weekend, or you might you want to use the analogy that you're the 49ers fighting in the, the Super Bowl or playing in the Super Bowl and it's just, you can't afford to take a, a scrimmage that injures you and gets you out of the game. So what we always focus on is safety in Muay Thai, safety in training. So when we go to have the big game day, we're 100%, 125%. Let's get started. Okay, assuming that you're warmed up, I want you to keep your body nice and tall, as tall as possible. In Muay Thai, it's a nice tall art. We want to be fast and, and powerful and yet able to move at all times. So if we notice that we start lowering our body to the ground, it slows us down. It makes us slower to block and slower to attack back. So that's this natural stance. I just want you to keep your feet shoulder width apart and all you're going to do is take a step forward with your lead leg. If you're right-handed, I want you to take a step with your left leg, left, left leg forward. If you're right-handed, I want you to, I mean if you're left-handed, I want you to do everything opposite I'm saying and I'd be your right leg in front right now. Okay, just nice and relaxed. And notice how my, my, my right leg, if you look right now, is on the ball of the feet, the balls of the foot right there, and my back leg's extended. From this position, I just want you to keep your arms at the side and rock on b both feet, on balls of the feet. So you're tapping left and right, left and right. This keeps your balance on both sides of your body. So you're not stuck on one side, you're not stuck on the other, and you're not stable in one position, locked down into the ground. If you're locked like this and you're not moving, it makes you easy to hit. If you move a little bit, you can kick and defend on either side without your opponent knowing which side you're moving from. Okay, so this keeps my, my weight shifting back and forth. Okay, moving forward right into our hand position. Just keep this position right now. Keep your shoulders straight down and right bending at the elbows. I want you to keep your, I want, I want you to actually bring your hands up and do an A-frame like you're reaching up and like you're going to do a dive, an A-frame and then just bring your hands straight down. From this position, Okay, you want to make a fist, clinching in your knuckles and turning in a little bit. So what I like to do is keep my forearms just slightly exposed. I see a lot of people trying to emulate Muay Thai like this. Be careful doing this because it opens you up for center line attacks, straight line punches. Okay? So again, we want to be careful of being too open, but we keep our arms up. You see our arms like this in Thai boxing compared to a lot of like boxing styles like this. It's because we have a lot of 45 degree angle attacks. Kicks come this way, and if we keep our hand here, the kick could come straight over the hand, push the hand down, and land into the neck. Okay? So the hands are 45 degrees, right above the temple level, nice and tall. Try not to block your eyes with your hands. Keep those hands up. Now, you can keep your hands in fists, or you can keep them open. But before you punch, you have to, before you make contact with your fist, you mean to make them locked, nice and clenched, okay? Keep your body relaxed, but strong and balanced. So now we have our basics. Our hands are going 45 degrees down to the ground, elbows outwards, and we're on the balls of our feet, nice and relaxed. Rock, let's rock back and forth. Keep your chin down and stay tall. Good, now I'm gonna switch stances. Now this is called the southpaw position, okay, again. This is my normal fighting stance. I like to keep, I'm right-handed, but I like to keep my, my stance in the southpaw position. You notice how I'm rocking back and forth. Bop. Always try to keep a rhythm. Try, I see a lot of people, they'll keep a rhythm with their feet, but they won't continue it with their arms. So they'll be locked like this, and they'll be moving their body. 
Make your whole body flow. There's a nice rhythm. Okay? Use your, use your body like a snake charmer would use to distract a snake, and that's how you can make your attack. So if I keep my hands moving, it makes my kicks set up easy. If I move my feet more, my hands will land a little bit easier. Okay? Going back to the orthodox position, again, always keeping moving. Balance, 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 balance. Now the basics in footwork are this. We're going to go right into moving forward. And this is important in understanding how to move. Our footwork carries everything. Whether I punch, elbow, I knee, or kick, everything is based on my footwork, my position that I stand in. So I'm having the fundamentals to move forward, backwards, left or right are very, very important. Moving forward, when I step forward, I want to continue my position. Right now, I'm in my key fighting stance. I can fire from my, my powerful side, my right side. I can throw my arms, my lead arms, my jab. But my, my power is really sitting on this rear side here. So keeping my left leg forward for a right-handed fighter is essential. So if I step forward, I don't want to have to sacrifice my body position. Notice how a normal footwork is. I step left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. This doesn't work if I want to keep my, my power guard, my power stance. So if I want to move forward, I have to shift with my lead leg forward and dragging my right leg. Notice how by doing that, I haven't changed my footwork. Okay? Again, watch as I step backwards. I'm going to continue the same type of format. I step back with my right leg, and I drag my lead leg, and I keep that position. Going forward, going backwards. Always being able to stop at any moment and ask yourself, can I attack? Can I defend? Okay, fighting stance, going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Okay, good, good balance. Same thing moving left and right. It's very important to do drills to understand the movement. I have to, the ring is in a circular, is in a square format, and I need to be able to follow the ring in any format, any direction my opponent may go. So if I have to cut over to the left, I still don't want to give up that strong position that my legs carry when I'm in my fighting stance with my right leg cocked back. It could be your left if you're southpaw, left-handed. Now look when I step over to the left. I step over my left leg, and my right leg follows. Left and follows. Left and follows. Same thing with the other leg. Good. Keep tall. Hands up. Hands up. <laughs> Now there's three types of zones in Muay Thai for fighting. We have a third zone, which is far away. This, this is a zone where I have to step in to make a, a contact. I have to step in a little bit before I can make any reach to my opponent or target. Step in a jab. Step in a kick. This is my long range. Okay, zone three. And that, that guard is important for me to keep my hands really high up chin down, and I have to watch out for those 45 degree angle shots. Because at that far of a range, at zone three, usually they're going to only be able to come at you with a few straight punches, but mainly 45 degree kicks. Long range weapons, or a straight, wet, straight kick coming in. Okay? But primarily you're wet. your range is going to come this way, your angles of attack will come this way. So at, at, range, at zone three, I've got to be able to keep my guard at 45 degrees. My chin down, my shoulders up a bit, but I still stand tall. I don't want to be doing this crouching down. Keep my legs nice and tall. Zone three. At zone two, I step in. They're a little bit closer. Now they're, we're in boxing range. We're in contact range. So the, the chance of me getting thrown a right punch or a straight center line shot is very high. So now I change my guard, and it's also harder for them to land those 45 degree head shots because we're closer now. So now I'll change my guard a little bit to being more forward. Not to say I, I can't forget about those 45 degree head kicks. I still keep aware of that, but my guard is mainly adjusted for straight shots. Well, now I've cut my, my guard in. I'm still aware of where my balance is. I'm finding stance. Watch. Good. Okay. Just keep it there. Nice and tight. Okay. Relax your body, but when you have to, be able to lock up, tighten up, and position and ground your legs into the ground so you have good stability. Now the third range, the third zone, is right and tight. This is elbow and knee range, okay? And it's just good to know this pretty much. You're going to be locking in. You're going to be locking in with your, with your, your opponent, and you're going to be closing and holding their arms in. Most likely, you'll be kneeing or elbowing, so keep your chin really tight. This is a dangerous area for your face. You want to watch out. Make sure you don't take shots. Of all the things you have to focus on is protecting your chin. It's very, very important. So let's review a little bit what we've done. The basic stance is so important. 
Keep your body balanced on both sides. Don't let go. Don't, don't be unaware of being on one leg or the other, like this, where you're locked down. It makes you slow. If I keep my weight like this, they can kick me on this side, kick me to this side. So it's easier. Okay? It's not to say they will always be able to, but the chances of them are better. Finding stance. You want to stay good and tall. You want to make sure that you focus on the, the basics to build upon this. This is everything you do from now on. It's going to be the foundation of what you're going to build on. Everything starts from here. Okay, so take your time with this. Make sure at all times, stop when you're training on the heavy bags. You're training with a partner. You're training with the pads. Look down at your stance. If you're like this, if you're like this, ask yourself, can you attack, can you defend? Because that's what you're learning how to do right here. You're learning how to attack and defend in combative sequences. Okay, so you test yourself all the time. Look at your stance. Sometimes when I'm teaching a class, I just have freeze. I freeze the class and I ask them, look at your stance. Can you attack? Can you defend? What would happen if somebody kicked you if you were in this position? What would happen if they punched you and you were in this position? Where are you? Where, where's your position? And that's what you want to work on. I don't care if you're a world champion or this day's your first day. Every punch and kick and technique that you do will be based upon the footwork that you're learning right now. Right now. This is the same training that professional world champions have to practice every single day. So focus on this. Try to learn 1% a day and it'll work for you. Okay, be safe, train hard. Bang. Bang. All right, well this concludes some of the basics that we learned. But I want to emphasize that the importance of this, all the things that we worked on, the footwork, the hand position, these are very, very important techniques that you're learning. Everything that you do from here, again, I can't emphasize this enough, is gonna be based on what you're learning right now. If you only have one technique and you have that down perfect, it'll be good enough for you, okay? It will work. So make sure that your funda the fundamentals are very, very strong. Be very, very safe when you're working in Muay Thai. It's, it's, it can be a very safe art. The fighting, it, it can be hard, but training should be very safe. At Fairtex, we don't have many injuries because we focus on safety. We make sure that we train like professionals and we emphasize on safety in all our work routines. Um, one of the things that it's helped me focus to become a good fighter is to become an excellent master student. I always try to focus on how do I learn better? How can I be a better student? And that's the thing I've learned about Thai boxing and the people who are great at Thai boxing is that the masters or the great fighters are always master students. And if I've learned anything from the masters I've worked around is that their minds are open and always looking to learn. So keep an open mind, stay focused, and work on these basics because it will help you in everything you learn for the future. Sweaty cup. My name is Alex Gong, head coach for the Fairtex fighting team. Today we're going to work on the basic kick to the body, the essential fighting weapon of Muay Thai. In this class we're going to work on the distancing, how to create power, getting the contact area, and drills and how to work with tie pads with practicing the, the kick to the body. Today we're going to work with John Sanong Fairtex, one of our world champions here at the Fairtex team. And he'll be partnering with me to show different techniques. Let's get ready to go. Okay, now we're going to work on the body kick, learning the different types of techniques we can apply to kick to the body. There's three primary kicks that we use for different ranges. We kick to the body with our shin contact area, and that's the contact area it goes from the mid part of the shin all the way down to the lower end of the shin, right above the ankle. We're going to work on three types of kicks to the body, long range, short range, and heavy kick. My partner, Joan Sanang, and I are going to go through some demonstration drills. I want you to pay attention. If you have a partner, you can work in with us. Follow me. Fighting stance. Now, notice how when I start off working, the, the practicing the kick to the body, I'm in a kicking range. I'm not in a real close range trying to practice my kick like I would for boxing. I'm in a kicking range. Good four to five feet away from each other. Keep your fighting stance. And at first, we're going to just get used to stepping forward. The big thing to watch out for for stepping forward is to step out at 45 degrees. And you'll learn as we go through the tape why it's so important. And follow me. As I step forward, my lead leg is going to step out 45 degrees. Notice how I step out. Again, let's do it two times. I step one. Back to my original stance and two. Okay? Now when I push my kick forward, I use that momentum stepping out at 45 degrees to thrust my kick into my target. Now I'm going to use the heavy kick to Joan Sanong's body. Stepping in, one and back to my original stance. Every time I strike a kick or any type of a weapon I throw out, I want to come back to my original stance. This is my ready stance. I can defend from this position. I can attack from that position. That's something you need to ask yourself at all times. Look at your stance. Look where you stand and say, can I attack? Can I defend? Watch again. 
stepping forward to the kicks of the body. As I kick forward, now you're going to see something a little bit different. I want you to pay attention as I thrust my arm and shoulder forward. This creates power. One, two, three. Shh. And back again. One, two, three. Shh. Every time I kick, I'm kicking right between the elbow and the, and the shoulder fighting stance. Now, just to get a good rhythm and drill, you can work with your partner. It's good to do this back and forth, just to get the distancing. So what we do at Fairtex is we kick back and forth counting. One, two, three, I kick, shh, and Jonathan comes back. One, two, three, shh, come back to fighting stance. So notice how we come right back in our original stance. What can we do from here? Attack and defend. Again, one, two, three, shh. One, two, three, shh. One, two, three, shh. One, two, three, shh. Good. Now, like I said, there's three types of kicks that we do to the body. The first kick, what we did was the heavy kick. And as you notice, when I make contact to my target, it's not to the side of the body, but almost right in front. That's the heavy kick, and we focus on being as, being as powerful as possible when we make contact to our, our target. Now, the next kick I'm going to show you is a little bit different. It's still the roundhouse kick, but it's the, what we call the long kick. And it's used a lot of times, not necessarily for heavy power, but to land points and fighting stance. Now, watch. I still step out 45 degrees. As I step out, I'm kicking with my leg a little bit longer. Instead of before I was turning my hip over, now you're going to see me reach a little bit. So I get a little bit extra length on my kick. Fighting stance. One, two, three, bop. One, two, three, bop. And you notice I'm kicking a little bit lower on my leg. Now it gives me a little bit more extension. Now we'll do it back and forth. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. Shh. Last time. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. Shh. Good. That's a long kick. It's really good for, especially when somebody's been blocking. Uh, to higher kicks and they're good at catching your leg, we, we em emphasize using the long kick, it's harder to grab. Now the next kick what we do for the kick to the body is called the short kick. It's exactly what the name is, it's short. So when I kick, a lot of times you see that my legs move straight. This is the only kick when I kick to the body that I bend my, my rear leg. Now as I step forward, watch again, nice and slowly. One, two, three. I kick right here. Notice how it's bent. Now this is good so if my partner, my opponent starts to grab my leg, I can pull my leg out and get out right away. So if I have a guy who's every time I kick with my long kick, watch again, fighting stance, I go to kick a regular heavy kick and he grabs, bang, and I'm stuck. I know he's going to be doing this. The next kick I can throw can be a short kick and it prepares me to get out of it. One, two, three. And I can pull out easier. Okay? Those are the different kicks that you can throw. Now let's practice them in different ways. Fighting stance. Now, it's really important to have the basic kick in Thai boxing down because everything that you apply from here on is going to be the fundamentals of what we're learning. What we just did was to kick to the body, short, long, and heavy. As you notice, and I kick, I'm practicing. I kick, I practice, I land my target, and I come right back in a fighting stance. This is, this is making my, my footwork, my original fighting stance stronger. If we practice this at the beginning of our Muay Thai training, especially for those beginners, we can build a lot from this. So this is elementary training, and this is the first weapon that we always want to give people in Muay Thai. Now, w watch my leg again. As I kick, my lead leg is going to stay as long as possible. The same thing with my, my rear leg, I mean my lead leg. Okay. Again, as we did when we were grabbing each other, I step forward, one, two, three, and we make sure that everything's straight. My hand is down here. You notice my shoulder's pulling fo going forward. My Standing leg is straight on the balls of the feet. This allows me to get power and pivot into my target. As you notice, my weight also isn't leaning backwards. My weight is leaning right into my target, so I have maximum thrust into my target, and I come back down. So we do this drill, catching our legs back and forth, just to make sure that we have the right fundamentals of the kick down. So Jones Tong's going to catch in, kick into my body, and I catch his leg. One, two, three, kick. And I hold his leg, make sure that his shin is turning down into my body area. He's on the balls of his feet, and his body's standing tall. Yeah, again, back and forth. You just do this a couple times. One, two, three. Shh. Good. And back. One, two, three. Shh. Good. This is some of the techniques that you can do with your partner. Go slowly with this, and make sure you have the fundamentals down before you do start doing this quickly. Okay? Again, the foot position is really important. 
one of the primary things you have to watch out for from throwing the right kick is the line of fire that you're walking into. So the danger area of me walking forward all the time is my knockout zones, usually my head. That's what I want to protect the most. So as I'm walking forward to make contact, I'm going into my target to kick, I have to watch out for the line of fire, which is straight in. Watch it, what could happen if I, I don't step out 45 degrees and step straight in. One, two, three, boom. Bad thing about this is I'm standing on one leg, so my ability to absorb the shot is going to be damaged. Again, I want to avoid this. We're going right in. The way to avoid that is by stepping out 45 degrees. And you can do this drill with your, with your new students, even your advanced students, to get the timing down. We do this a lot. So we count together. We count one, two, three, and the same time I fire to the body, he tries to throw a shot to my head. Get, we get our timing down. We also build confidence in dealing with that, right, that big, heavy right hand. That's everybody's primary weapon, especially in American fighters. Fighting stance, one, two, three. Good. You notice how I step out 45 degrees. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Good. If I were to step forward again, I walk right into that. It's a good drill. We'll do it back and forth. Don't sit on kicks now. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Good. Throw a good right punch to your partner. If you're not throwing a good punch, they're not going to have the, the real motion and real line of fire that is going to be thrown at them when they really fight. These are very important contact points to make sure that your students are learning or yourself as you're, you're pushing in all your training. Okay. Now we've worked on the rear leg. This is your primary weapon, but you have to be a, a versatile fighter, having both weapons and limbs available to make the same type of attacks. So now we're going to work on the lead leg. My left leg is actually a faster leg because it's in front of my in front, it's closer to my target. But one thing that we don't want to do is switch our stance before we kick because our, our target, our opponent, is going to know now we're getting prepared for the left kick. Fighting stance. Now, before I make target, my contact, the same mechanics that I did for the right kick, I'm going to use for the left. Only now I'm going to reposition by stepping out with my right leg at 45 degrees. Fighting stance again, watch my balance is both feet is tapping. I step out 45 degrees. Now it changes my stance. Before I, before I step out, I want to make sure that I don't telegraph as much as possible. I step, reposition, and kick, and come back into my original stance. Again, same concepts apply for the left leg as they do the right. I'm stepping out 45 degrees away from the line of fire. Fighting stance again, watch me slowly. One, two, three, and I come back. Fighting stance. Now watch as I step in that my lead leg, which will be my right leg, is on the ball of the feet, and then my Left hand pivots all the way through, so I can throw power. In your mind, don't think of kicking a target, but kicking through a target, like you were swinging a baseball bat all the way through. Fighting stance again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. In your mind, think of your kick like your golf swing. <clears throat> it's not the power, it's the mechanics that create power and distance. Bang. Shadow boxing, one of the best ways you can practice your technique, especially by yourself. When you shadow box, you're not limited to working with a fixed target, a fixed position. Heavy bags, partners, tie pad training, they fix you in one position. It's impossible for you to kick across the room when your target's at one side. You have to be where your target is. When you shadow box, you have free movement. You can move to the left, you can move to the right, you can time things out, and you build a curriculum that works for your personal fighting strategy. One of the ways that Apidate, our head trainer at Fairtex, known as the uh, fighter of the century, recognized by the king of Thailand, said, the best training you can ever do is shadow boxing. Well, I believe that it's one of the best things you can do for personalized shadow boxing, and the whole curriculum of Muay Thai is important. But this is one of those things that you cannot miss. Now we can watch Jones Song go through the basics of kicking to the body as he works, working on kicking to the body using shadow boxing techniques. <laughs> Chon Sanang throws his techniques. He's always focused on keeping his balance on, on both sides of his legs, 50-50. So he doesn't have his weight sitting on his left or his right. He always keeps his body balanced between left and right. Your balance is one of the primary things that you're focusing on when you shadow box. Another thing that you want to work on when you shadow box is fluid movement. Just going through and following through your target. What I mentioned before in kicking to the body, it's not necessarily kicking your target, but kicking through your target, having the range of motion. So you notice as Jones and I kicks, he's going 180 degrees going through. 
So he, as he kicks, he might turn his back to the other side. Well, this is a technique that we use in shadow boxing just to get the fluid momentum. When we fight, we don't kick this way and leave our back exposed to our opponent. And as always, we focus on keeping our hands up and on the balls of the feet. Good thing to do is to get a lot of ring movement, move to the left, move to the right, fade in, fade back, step over, and then attack. There's different ways you might attack. You might kick twice to the right, twice to the left, and kicking uh, with all your different ranges of the kick. Like we mentioned before at the beginning of this tape, there's three types of kick, short kick, long kick, and heavy kick. Primarily what you practice when you're shadow boxing is your big heavy kick, full extension, and driving with your shin. Let's watch a few more moments while John Sonang demonstrates how we shadow box practicing the body kick. And great. Thank you, John Sonang, for showing us some great techniques. <laughs> Pad training, essential part of Thai boxing. Now, if you notice, I have all the pads used to train fighters. This is the outfit that professional uh, training uses. I have shin pads, belly pads, and, of course, the, the Thai pads. This is the essential meat and potato training tool of Thai boxing. Now, for Thai boxing, it's important to always make sure we focus on power. With this body kick, it's a primary weapon, which means we're not only looking to make contact, but to make damage with it. So we have to make sure that we train our boxers with power. Start off slowly when you're working with new boxers to make sure you have the range and you're used to the power of holding the pads. As people progress with using the tie pads, they can freely hold the pads and your boxers and professional fighters can throw their techniques as freely and you should be able to catch them. Again, start off as like you did in the original part at the beginning of the video at basic footwork and stances. Now look at John Sanang and I are regular fighting stance at five foot to four foot apart. And when we work with tie pads, if you're holding the tie pads or you're going to be kicking the tie pads, this is the time to really focus like you're fighting. Keep your mind focused, your attention focused, and act as though the person in front of you is the opponent looking to knock you out. If you can keep this focused, you'll be able to use this focus in your next fight, fighting stance. First, what we're going to do is make sure that we hold the tie pads for John Sanang's right kick at 45 degrees. But notice how my body is still looked forward. Fighting stance. We're just going to go one kick at a time, but full, pow full power. Step in and one. <laughs> right, heavy. We're going to go. It's, now we start off slowly, but then we big up, build up the power. And as you notice, John Sonong makes noise as he kicks. That way he releases the air out of his body and makes his body recover a little bit easier. Ready? Two. <laughs> Good. He comes right back to the original stance. Three. <laughs> Good. He comes back. Good. Notice how every time he repositions his body. Okay, fighting stance again. Hush. Good. Come back. Two times now. Now we pick it up. Good. Two times again. Good. Notice how again he always keeps his lead leg at, as straight as possible. So when he steps in, he's on the ball of his foot. Again, now we're going to pick it up. We're going to start getting used to the mechanics of the kick. We're going to do five kicks this time. Ready again. Go. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Build that rhythm. Build the endurance for your boxers. Always focus, focusing on power. Again, one more time. Five times. Heavy. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now with the lead leg, it's the same way we learned it in the beginning when we were doing the pairing drills with our partners. Again, John Strong's going to kick with his left leg. He's not going to telegraph by switching. He's going to step forward and kick me with his left leg. Fighting stance again. Ready? One, two, three, go. Bam! Good. And he comes right back to fighting stance. Notice how the left leg's in the lead position again. Fighting stance again. Two. Bam! Bam! Good. Two. Good. Notice how I always keep my shoulders forward. So even though I'm holding tie pads, I'm moving heavy bag, I'm making my technique strong. I'm working on where my position is. I'm getting used to the full power and speed of a real kick, the distance of a real opponent. Fighting stance again, same thing. Now we're going to go five times. Ready? Go. Good, fighting stance. Now there's a lot of drills you can do with the tie pads. But right now we're just going to go through a few natural sequences of practicing the body. I might attack Jones and I might move left and right. 
and he'll have to adjust, but focusing on return fire with the body kick. Fighting stance, now we go. Start off. Good, so there's a couple different sequences you can do with your tie pads. Right now we're just focused on basic movement, practicing the kick to the body. Again, one of the things you can do to do this is start off slowly, one kick at a time, one kick at a time, and as you progress through the movement of the round, you start doing two kicks. And what we do at Fairtex is when that 30 second bell, because we're always training on, on the timers like we would for fights, that 30 second bell hits, 50 kicks each side, working the gas and endurance. These are the basics you can work on tie pads. If you want to know more about how to hold the tie pads and work the defenses for the kicks, check out other videos that describe this in more detail. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that concludes our tape on kicks to the body. Now, there's a lot of things we worked on today, and there's a lot more you can learn on it. But if you focus on the basic techniques that we focused on, the basic points, and that is stepping forward, balance, keeping your body balanced from left and right side, kicking with the shin area, making sure you have full contact on your target, kicking through your target and not at your target will help you kick more powerfully today. Now there's a lot more that we can learn on strategies and implanta implantation of landing a kick and we'll learn those as we go into more advanced training techniques. But today I just want you to fo focus on the basics and hopefully you have a lot more fun kicking. Sweaty Cup. My name is Alex Gong, head captain of Fairtex Fight Team. Today we're going to be working with Joan Sung, my partner, on leg kicks, one of the elementary weapons of Thai boxing and probably the most well known to the non Thai boxing world. Uh, leg kicks today, we're going to work on the power of the kick, the positioning, and different drills we can do to make the kick better. Let's get ready to go. Hello. I have John Sanong Fairtex with me to work on the leg kick. I'm going to go through the basic concept of the footwork first before we start working on the kick itself. Fighting stance should be about four to five feet away from your target. Now you're in kicking range, so don't try to start off in this range in a boxing range. It would be the range of where the hands are, like three to two feet away from your target. Okay, again, now we're at four to five feet. This is our kicking range. And keep your body and your normal fighting stance, everything going forward on the balls of the feet. Now when we kick, again, the leg, we have to step out 45 degrees. And by kicking, I mean stepping out 45 degrees, when we kick, we avoid the straight line attack, the line of fire, which could be the right punch or the left side. Okay? So again, watch as I step forward, just understanding the basic footwork of the kick, I step out 45 degrees. Again, fighting stance, I'm looking forward towards my target, which is Jonesong. Right now, I step out 45 degrees. Notice how my right shoulder is coming out outside his. Okay, again, one more time, I step out into this position. Now when I, when I kick to the leg, I'm actually lowering my kick down, so I have to bring my body weight into the target. Stepping forward, now unlike all the other kicks you see in Thai boxing where the lead leg is straight and on, extended on the balls of the feet, now I'm going to step forward and I'll be on the balls of my feet, or I'm flat footed a little bit, bending my knee. Fighting stance again, my contact area, I step out, bent, and now I pivot through, thrusting my right arm down so I get full power. Okay, I'm going to go through it two times before I kick, ready, stepping forward, one. And come back. Two. Now you can do this with your partner and your with your partner, so you can get this down. Your partner partner might want to do the same thing. He steps forward. One. Two. Just to get the mechanics down. Now we start to learn to land a kick. But first, before we land a kick, we have to know exactly where we're landing the kick. When we kick, we want to kick to the center of the thigh, right about here. And that's the meaty part of the leg. And the contact area that you're kicking with is your hard part of the middle part of your shin, right here. You see how that is hard? OK, fighting stance again. I'm going to step forward, and we're just going to go light contact. Don't pound your partner, because they'll pound you back. It's their turn next. OK, ready? Fighting stance. I step in. One. And I come back. Come back to my original stance. And from this stance, I always ask myself, what? Can I attack? Can I defend? Now, John Sung's going to step into me, stepping out. One, two, three. Shh. And steps back. 
Notice how he turned his body over. Okay, again, that gets you momentum into your kick. Our kick is really going at a 45 degree angle. So if we step and move our body in that direction, we have more power. And that's very important. It's a powerful kick. It's one of the more powerful kicks in Thai boxing. So if you don't have your momentum going through, it won't be hard. Fighting stance again. We go back and forth. One, two, three. Shh. And back. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. Shh. One, two, three. So two more times, and just to get a good concept of it. One, two, three. Ash. One, two, three. Shh. Good. Now another drill you can do with your partner to make sure that you're not walking in that center line attack, because again, what's very dangerous when you're fighting or going towards your opponent is that line, that straight line fire. So what we might do with our with our partners to make sure we have the angle down is count off, and as I kick, our partner throws a right punch. Fighting stance again. I step in, one, two, three, he throws the right punch. And he throws it right at your face, so you make sure that you get out of the way. If I step straight in, watch what could happen. I walk right into a right punch. The danger point for this is not only I get punched in the face, which is terrible, is I'm on one leg. I don't have much ability to absorb the power of the punch. Again, watch what happens. I get hit, my body's going to go backwards. Very dangerous. But if I can step out, especially as my opponent is coming in to thrust his punch at me, the two forces meet. His momentum coming forward into my kick and my kick meeting his body. Watch again. One, two, three. He's going to throw the punch. One, two, three. Shh. Again, see how we meet? One, two, three. Shh. You can do this back and forth to really get the rhythm down. And as you, as you get better with this, start throwing at live speed, really trying to hit him with that right punch. That way you guys get the timing down. If, what, if your partner steps in straight, Hit the right punch with them. They'll get better at it next time. I guarantee it. And come, John Son will kick me. One, two, three. Good. You can move around a little bit and get used to stepping to the left or stepping to the right like you would in any other fight. But just work on this basic technique at, at once, at first. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Again. One, two, three. Good. That's some drills that you can use to get your rhythm and getting in, used to stepping forward with the kick. Now that's your right leg. Now with your, your left leg, when we kick, we, it's a little bit different target. The left leg, we're going to lead leg, and you could be by southpaw, which is you have a different stance. Falling from the lead leg, now our target is a little bit different. When I fight, I don't kick for the back leg, I actually kick for the lead leg on the inside. So fighting stance, watch me at first. Now my left leg is in front. For me to get ready and prepared so I have power with this, if I kick this way, I won't have any power. I reposition my leg by stepping out 45 degrees. Again, watch me. I step out 45 degrees. You see how my left leg now is the rear leg, cocking it back for full power. As I am right there again, it's back to our original stance. Left leg in front, I step out, reposition, and now I can kick right into the inside leg. Fighting stance, watch me again. I step out. As I reposition, I thrust my hip and throw my arm and shoulder forward. And back. Fighting stance again. One more time. Just go through the full mechanics. One. Good. Now we can do this back and forth just to get used to it. When you're, when you're working with your partner and they're kicking at your leg, just keep your leg a little bit light so you don't take the, too much impact. Work with your partner. Don't bang them up so you can get used to the techniques. Johnson, I'm going to go. And we'll go back and forth. Good. Good. Get this rhythm down back and forth. It's good to do these drills for five to ten minutes at a time. Don't, get re don't feel that you're getting repetitive. You want to build this into your fighting curriculum. Fighting sense again. Now, we've, got, we've done the lead leg. You can do the back leg, the rear leg. Okay? You notice how I step forward, I kick the inside leg. Very good because it's, it stops a lot of the balance of somebody coming forward and it's a good, it's a good attack. But sometimes I may want to shoot for the rear leg, which is a little bit different. I have to step forward a little bit straighter and reach for that back leg. So now when I kick with my rear leg, which is my left leg right now, and I'm kicking towards his rear leg, I've really got to reach around <laughs> to try to reach the back leg. Again, fighting stance. I still step forward, my lead leg, and reach. And come back. And we're going to do this back and forth for a little bit. Jones and on. Ish. Shh. 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 
good. Really watch how we step forward on our, our standing leg. As we step forward, we're pivoting our body weight, thrusting it into our target. One more time, watch my leg. Watch my leg again. And good. Now I worked a little bit of the leg, uh, the left side leg. Now for Thai boxing, a big part of the fight is defense. And if you don't have a defensive game, these heavy kicks will end your fight night really early. So we're going to look, focus a little bit on the, the blocking of these kicks, but not too much. Later we'll have a, a more comprehensive instructional video on how to do the defenses. First of all, when you defend with the leg kicks, we want to meet our target at 45 degrees with our shin. Watching it first, John Sang is going to kick to my right side of my leg and I'm going to block. Watch my leg as he steps in, steps in and kick. I bring it straight up. Notice how my arms don't move down. I keep my body nice and straight. He comes in to kick and I just block it, meeting my shin bone to his shin bone. Therefore, he doesn't make contact on my thigh. One, two, three. And he comes right back. Again. One, two, three. I let him come to me. I don't go to him. Now, as soon as I, I, get, I defend that kick, I reposition my body, and I get ready to do an attack or defend. Okay, same thing on the inside leg. I'm going to use my lead leg to the block coming over 45 degrees. So as John Sang kicks my inside leg, the defense would be to come, out, come across 45 degrees. Again. Steps in. One more time. Good. This is some basic drills that we use in Thai boxing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, now we've worked a bunch of different drills on how to apply the leg kick, how to defend against it. Now, one of the things, that, again, you can never miss is the shadow boxing. This is one of the basic, basic uh, self-training methods you can use. Uh, Api Day, our head trainer from Fairtex, also the Muay Thai fighter of the century, told me that the best training he ever had was through shadow boxing, and I truly believe it. It creates a tempo of your own, creates your own fighting rhythm and balance. And it doesn't restrict you like heavy bags and partners do. One of the things you're going to notice today with Jones Sanong training and doing the shadow boxing is that he uses his entire body to set up his leg attack or leg technique. He might move his arms, he might move his hips and step forward and backwards to set up a rhythm. So if you're going to be doing leg kicks in a fight, you don't want to be telegraphing your opponent, hey, now I'm changing my, my rhythm to set up the leg kicks. You never want to telegraph any techniques that you're going to be doing. So John Sanong is going to show us the movements of moving to left and right and stepping forward and backwards while applying the leg kick. Let's watch John Sanong. Excellent. Now notice how John Sanong is keeping his body moving forward and out, keeping a nice smooth rhythm. Always keeping tall up and as tall as possible. Therefore, he can use all his weapons and he can defend better. If you notice a fighter that crouches down, bends his knees a lot, he makes very susceptible to getting kicked to the body and uh, makes you slow to attack back. Boom. Now every time he runs and I kicks, he steps forward, using his momentum forward to create power. Uh, one of the reasons why we shadow box so much is it helps us not necessarily kick our target, but kick through our target. As you notice, his kick doesn't stop right in front of him where his imaginary target is. He kicks all the way through to, to emphasize maximum power. And as soon as he kicks, he repositions his footwork so he can either make a movement to attack or defend. Now, again, like I said, it's really important to emphasize on keeping the whole body in a smooth rhythm. Your hands are moving, your feet are moving, all together. He moves left, moves right. When I shadow box, I try to imagine that I'm attacking or defending against a certain uh, opponents at different heights and different weights. Okay, let's watch John Sung a little bit more as he goes through some of the movement. When you shadow box, really envision somebody that you're attacking. Excellent. Now, thanks, John Sanong. He's given us some basics on Thai, thai boxing, shadow boxing. <laughs> Great. Well, now we've worked on the, the Thai boxing leg kick drills, and we also worked on shadow boxing. Well, what we can't miss is the Thai pad training, or the pad training used to make power and gas essential for Thai boxing fighting. Okay, the leg kicks is a very, very effective technique if it's landed correctly, but it has to have power. So we work with the tie pads or the leg kick pad, which is specifically designed by Fairtex to make this kick more powerful. We use this, this pad uh, to step in and to make power and also keeps the holder very safe. You see how thick my pad is, that way I get protected. Again, when you're working these drills, make sure you work safely. If 
if I get hurt, if Johnson Ryan gets hurt in training tomorrow when we go to train to get ready for that big fight, we're not going to be there. We're going to be injured at home. So it's important that we always focus on safety, but yet making sure that we improve 1% every day. Now first when we start off, we're going to do the right kick to my left thigh. You notice when I hold the thigh pad, I put it, the, the leg kick pad, I put it right on top of my thigh. So he makes contact, not to the side of my body, but right in front, because that's how we want to meet our target. So if I go to step in to throw a technique or kick or punch or knee, I'm being met with a strong leg kick, and that's what we're going to do. Start off at one. First, again, when Johnson Ong steps in, he's going to put full power into it and make a good, strong ki, which is a yell to make sure we get that good breathing as we kick. Fighting stance at first. Ready? And go. <coughs> good. Notice how he repositions. Again. Two. <coughs> good. Three. <coughs> good. Four. Good. Now we did like in the drills before, we did the tie pad, or when we were working with the partners, we threw a right punch at the same time. Again, we want to watch out for that, that line of fire that's coming straight down the pipe. So as we step in for the kick, we step out 45 degrees, protecting our chin. Okay? Again, try to watch how Johnson Young steps out of the range. I'm going to step in. Ready? One, two, three. <coughs> Good. One, two, three. <coughs> Good. Start throwing it at your target so they get used to that punch coming at them. Again, last time. Ready? One, two, three. Bam! <coughs> Good. Now, the left leg is as important as the right. What we're going to do is switch it up a little bit. At first, watch how I hold the pad. The target area for the inside leg kick, again, is right here on the inside thigh. So we're going to bring the, the leg kick pad right there so they can have a good target there. Be careful of your, your, your partner will kicking you in the groin area. You want to kick right underneath where it says Veritex. Excellent. Ready? We'll start off. One. Bam! Good. Now notice how I leave my leg and let it fly out a little bit, but that gives him the ability to thrust through full power. Fighting sense again. Two. Bam! Good. Three. Bam! Good. Four. Bam! Five. Bam! Good. Now you can also use these drills to make power and to make gas. Spe especially for those beginning students, you might have them do techniques like five kicks, one side. So we'll kick and we'll move a little bit at the same time as we're kicking. Five times. Let's go, Jonathan Tong. Ready? Go. Mash! 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 Good. Same thing with that left side. Now I'm going to hold it over here, keeping a moving target, and go. Good. So now it works on the basics. Now students advance, we might try to do techniques and movement drills with this. We might attack, we might move over, step over. And now let's just go through some basic movements, what we might do as advanced level working at this, this pad. Ready? Let's go. I'm going to kick. Excellent. So those are some of the basics that you can do. And as you work with your partner and advance and get used to the movement, you can start putting combinations together. Even more advanced might be to hold a, a, a focus mitt right here and put the hand combinations together with this. Be safe and work slowly as you develop the use of training with these tools. <laughs> Excellent. Now we've done about everything you can learn uh, for the basics and leg kicks. There's a lot you can work on to focus on landing the shot, but right now it's most important just to have the power of the kick, the position, and make sure that you, when you step in for the kick, you're not in danger of that right punch. What we're going to work on, sometimes you don't have a partner to work with the, the, the leg kick pad and you have to work with a heavy bag, which is very important, it develops the power. We're going to watch how Jones Sanon kicks the bag and repositions himself. Never, it's ne you never can forget the importance of your hand position and the basic fundamentals of self-defense when you're stepping in to make an attack. So if he attacks, he keeps his hands up and repositions right away. Let's watch Sean Sung as he shows us that technique. <laughs> Excellent. Good. When working on the heavy bags, focus on full power and reposition. Sometimes it's really good to focus on kicking twice. Notice that Jones Song also balances out with putting his hands and feet together. Okay. 
If, you, if you're one track minded and you're only focusing on your kicks, it's really important. It's easy for your opponent to defend and realize where your next target and shot's going to be. With the pole bags, it enables us to keep moving all the way around the bag as we're making contact. Notice his, every time John Sonong makes contact, he's kicking at the same level of the bag. He's always making contact with the same area of his shin. Okay, kicking with both the left and right foot. John Sonong is putting the hands together. Again, always focus on full power. When you're kicking, keep your range at kicking range. When you step in for your boxing, you have to step in and keep at a boxing range. Know your ranges. Your kick is a longer range weapon. Your punches are a shorter range weapon. Excellent. Thank you, John Sonong. <laughs> Excellent. Well, now we've done everything in the basic movements of Thai boxing leg kicks. Now, there's a lot you can work on. I want you to emphasize on the power and the position of your body as you step in for the kick. Review these things slowly and try to implement it into your training routine 1% daily. Don't try to do too much at once because it will be overwhelming. As long as you're moving forward in your training, you're always succeeding. There's a lot we can do on the leg kicks and a lot of combinations you can use to set your, your kick up. But if you just work on the basics, you can add to this slowly. Uh, for, for the mo main thing that I want people to understand, though, with the leg kicks, is it's a very easy technique to defend against. So as a primary weapon, it's good to have as a, a strong weapon. But understand that as, as people develop in Thai boxing, they can defend against it easily. Check out our other videos on defense, which will show you exactly how you can defend uh, in different scenarios with the leg kick. Excellent. Well, check out our other tapes. And we look forward to doing some more training with you here at the Fairtex Videos. Swati Cup, my name is Alex Gong, team captain for the Fairtex Muay Thai team. Today we're going to be working on the neck kick, the short range, and long range kick. Working with me is Joan Sanong Fairtex, one of our world champions with us at Fairtex camp. <laughs> Great. Now we're going to start working on basic drills that we can do to make the kick to the neck work. Right now we're going to first work on the long range neck kick with my partner Joan Sanong. Notice how we're staying in a kicking range. Now when you're working with your, with your techniques, try not to force them in a different zone. So I'm in a far, raise, far away kicking zone, what I always call zone three. Zone two and zone one, which is really close. So right now at zone three, I'm going to be working on kicking to the neck. Same rules apply that we always use in all of our forward kicks is we step out 45 degrees. Again, with our lead leg, we're going to step out in a 45 degree angle on the balls of the feet. Since we're kicking high, we want to also emphasize keeping our body really tall. So when I go to make a kick, I don't bend my lead leg, I keep my body as reached up as possible. Nice and tall fighting stance. Now, again, focus on keeping your hands up. If you're kicking somebody to the head or neck level, they're going to try to do the same thing back. It's too much of a, a swap to take a shot to the head, so make sure your guard is nice and strong. Don't accept getting hit in the head. It's not something you can play with. Fighting stance at first. Now, working with a partner that's experienced is important. If you don't have a partner that's experienced, take your time. Make sure that they know what you're going to do. When you're kicking to the head, it's very you don't, dangerous. You don't want to do it and injure somebody. Right now, again, we're going to just kick to the head level. Don't so long just going to cover up or keep his hands up by his head, and we're going to go back and forth to get the rhythm. This is a long range kick. Watch me at first, I go slowly go through the range. I step in and <laughs> kick, and I come right back. Okay? What I want to do is try not to arc really far out, but a short, straight up arc into the, into the head level. The, re the way I step into it and turn my pivot my body is by the stepping over. Okay? So if I step straight in, I come really wide, it makes my kick slow. If I step 45 degrees and keep my kick up, I can keep it short. And that's important to keep the speed and make sure your, your opponent doesn't know it's coming. So we're going to go back and forth. First, I'll kick to John Sanong's head, and he'll kick back. Back and forth. Good. Nice long kick. Make sure you're not in the rain, you're going to be in the line of fire. That straight line punch is still very. Very, very dangerous. If I step in, and I step straight in, and I throw a kick to this head, and he throws right punch again, boom, I get knocked out. Very important to step over. Watch again. Good. Now, just to get a rhythm in, uh, for your fighting style and technique to land your shot, play with your balance a little bit. Maybe shoot a jab out first. A combination. Good. Now working the, the, the long kick. Okay, when making contact with the long kick, 
Now you're making contact with the top of the foot, right here. Okay, not so much the shin area. It's a long kick. When you work with the next kick to the head, which is called the short kick, because it's closer to you, you start hitting with the shin area, just like we did when we kicked with the body or the leg. Okay, the shin area is from the top of the ankle to midway in the, in the shin. Fighting stance, watching at first. Now, I'm going to land this shot a little bit closer. So I step in, and I notice that my range is closer than I had before when I was throwing the long kick. To make it land, because I, I have to bring my leg up to the head area, I have to arc my kick up really high. So stepping back, I step in, and I arc all the way up and down. The range of motion should come up and make contact with the neck area right here. Very important. So watch again, I step over, big arc, and I come down into the neck area. When we hold our hand position, it's different than what you might see in Western boxing. Notice how John Sonon keeps his hands up by his forehead, not by his chin like you see in boxing like this. Watch again, if John Sonon were to keep his hands here, if I were to come with a, 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 a short kick, I might reach his neck and push his hands down. Notice how the hand right there is pushed down and the neck is driven right through. Again, one more time. The hand's there. I could easily push and get into the neck. The neck is a very easy place to knock somebody out because you have your big jugular vein here. If you make light contact there, you can knock somebody out very quickly, very easily. This is a technique that you don't need to throw a lot of power on. It's more timing and balance and uh, positioning to make this work. Let's go back and forth a little bit. Now we might throw a little combination. Back and forth. Do you guys notice the difference of the short and long range kick? Short again, nice arcing movement and coming down. Again. Good. And sometimes it fades a little bit like it's coming forward. Now, same thing with the lead leg. We're going to work on the lead leg, same, com same type of thing. Shh, shh. Step out, 45 degrees, repositioning the, the left leg. Notice how it's behind me now, and it's cocked back to make contact. Again, shh, shh, shh. reposition, shh, and down. Again. Shh. Good. Shh. Good. Some of the basic techniques. One more. Excellent. So there's a lot of drills that you can do just in making the combination, the rhythm to land these kicks. What we're doing right now, landing the, to the head kick, you can use for body kicks or leg kicks. Same type of rhythm. These pairing drills simulate fighting. And that, it's the type of mindset that you want to take all the time when you're training. Think like you're fighting and you'll fight smart. Fighting stance again. Now one of the things that I want to emphasize on is defense too. Notice how when, when someone kicks to you, that, uh, they have to reach really far to get to your head. So actually getting a kick up to the head is quite difficult. One of the w reasons why we don't kick so much up to the head is it's easy to gather range. So if Jones and kicks to my head, okay, by just stepping back a little bit, I bring my head out of his range. Fighting stance again. He kicks one more time, I just step out. Notice I just bend on my back leg a little bit. I'm in position. That's one reason why we kick to the body a lot. So if we're setting up these techniques, we usually have to do something first, a combination or a counter. Maybe I go to punch John Sanang. At the same time, I set him with a jab, and he kicks at the same time, and that's how we land it. Again, maybe the right side. Good. Be careful when you're working with your partner. Okay, nice and slow technique, and you can get it down. Excellent. <laughs> tie pad training, essential for Muay Thai training. We try to put the tie pad training with combinations, especially as, it, as students advance. Uh, professional fighters are going to put everything together, but if you're beginning and working on singular techniques, slow it down. Learn things step by step. So right now we're going to work on several different types of kicks. We have the neck kick that's long and the neck kick that's short. I want to show you a couple different ways that we can hold tie pads and then how we can do combinations to set up these type of kicks. Okay, working with me is John Sanan again. Again, always try to stay focused that you're in a real fighting stance. So if you're holding tie pads, this is a time for you to actually be focusing on your own fight game. Hold your body like you would fighting and hold pads as focused as somebody who's really trying to hit you. This is something where somebody's hitting you as fast as they can and as hard as they can. So be, be aware of what they're doing. Be focused so you don't get hurt. Safety is a must. 
Fighting stance at first, we're just trying to take our time getting used to the, the range of the kick and the power. So first of all, we're going to do a head kick, which is a long kick, right to the head. Hold it right there. Be careful of doing this, exposing your elbow to, to your, your uh, partner's kick. You want to keep the tie pad flush, so when they make contact, it always makes contact in the center of the pad. Fighting stance, both hands up, and one. Two. Good. Keep moving a bit so you're constantly readjusting yourself. Okay? Build that rhythm as you're training. As you know, John's constantly moving. Again. Ish. Good. Same thing with the left side. Just like we mentioned before in the other drills, you have to switch your stance. So when he kicks with his left, he takes a step forward. He's coming to me. He has to step in with his right leg. Again. Good. Constantly readjust yourself. Now, when you're working with the, the, the short range kick, it's a little bit different. Now, one thing, going back into the long range kick, we're going to do a couple more drills on this. This is a technique that you, it's hard to land. The, the distance, again, I mentioned before, from his foot to my head is quite large. So to set this up is, is a tricky matter. Move, use your movement, use your other parts of your weaponry to set it up. So we might do a combination. The first one might do a jab, step in, push your partner back. Now it gives you range to make the kick. So again, combination, jab, psh, kick the head. Psh, good. You can step back one more time. Jab, psh, kick. Bam. Good. Fighting stance. Good. Reposition every single time. Always get yourself in a position so you can do what? Attack or defend. Always keep that in mind. Same thing with the lead leg. You might want to set it up with your right to get them to step back, a right punch. Again, fighting stance. <laughs> Good. Good fighting work. Okay. Now you can start doing things as you advance. You start attacking back. So make sure Zhong Sang where well, your partner is ready and always being prepared for that attack or defense, attack or defense position. Fighting stance, right punch. <laughs> Good. There's a little combination you did. So now this couple different things you can build on this as you get more advanced, but focus on the basic technique of the long kick. Make sure that you stay far away, okay? This is a, this is a long range weapon that you use in your kick. It keeps you away from, far, from shorter range, very powerful, dangerous weapons like the punch. I can't reach his chin and he can reach mine with his foot. That's a, a better strategy position for him. Fighting stance. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. It's a short range kick. Obviously, if he's this far, it's hard for him to land it. So he has to move in forward. Again, we always want to trick our opponents. So Jong Sung is going to emphasize looking low to keep me focused on where his movement possibly is, next attack. So he's looking low, and he's going to step in and kick the neck. <clears throat> Good. Arc your kick so it comes not upwards, but up and down into the neck area. Because now we're not kicking the chin, we're kicking the neck. So I would call it the neck kick. Fighting stance. Notice how I tilt down a little bit, giving him an angle so he can make contact at 45 degrees coming down into my tie pads. <coughs> Good. And a combination. Setting up. <coughs> Good. One more time. Okay. Again, and good. <coughs> good. Nice curve. Now, one more thing, we're on the left side, a little bit of the same thing, but we have to reposition the footwork like we did in the other techniques. Okay, now sit down, and go. <coughs> With a combination of hands to set it up, keep, keep an eye on his footwork and keep, how, keep an eye on how he's looking downwards. Funny stance. <coughs> Good. Excellent. Well, some of the basic movements for the tie boxing and the neck kick. Use your tie pads wisely. Be careful because you're kicking at the head. Go slowly at first. Pick it up as you understand how to use these combinations. <laughs> Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing, again, one of the emphasized techniques that we push at Fairtex. You can always work with shadow boxing on you and you're not necessarily needing a partner. And you're not fixed with the tie pad, with the pads or the heavy bags. Here we're going to watch Jones Sanong just go through movement. Watch him set up his mechanics and the timing of it. There's two types of kicks he's working on, the short and long range head kick. When he, does it, when he steps in for the short range kick, you're going to constantly see him moving forward, not moving back too much. To make the, the long kick, he's got to be aware of his distance. So he's 
this is constantly stepping back or stepping in and out to make that range. So if you're trying to land these kicks, be aware of what your distance is to your target. If you're shadow boxing, make that imaginary opponent in your mind and put it all together. Let's watch Jones Sedang put this together. <laughs> Good. Here we have Jones Sedang demonstrating the movements in shadow boxing of practicing the long and short neck kicks. Again, you know, don't emphasize too much on just looking at for the neck. Notice how Jones Sedang keeps his head downwards, looking at the feet of his target. Uh, or his opponent. If you look at your, your opponent's head, they know it's coming, they start preparing for it. Again, the, the, the kick to the neck is a, an easy kick to see, so you have to be really tricky with it. Um, because it's, it's longest distance for an attack uh, to make contact, it takes the longest time to get there. So you have to be tricky, you have to use timing, and know your ranges of kicks. Again, it's short and long range kick. If John Sonong steps back, and he positions himself for longer range kicks. If he's moving forward, he's crouching and closing in the distance of his target. Therefore, it's necessary for him to, short, to kick with the short range kick. Again, always focus on your hands and your whole body moving as one, so you're not tight at the upper body and loose at the lower body. Thank you, John Song, for showing us those techniques. <laughs> Great. Well, now we've worked on two of the kicks for the, the neck, the long and short range kick, with different drills that we can put together. This is an advanced technique. Johnson and I were working with different drills. Work with this stuff slowly. Be very, very safe. Again, you're kicking to the head, so you want to make sure that you don't hurt your partner. Take your time with this. Pick this up slowly. Add it to the other techniques and weapons that you already use. This is a technique that's going to take you a little bit of time to, to apply. It's more about rhythm and timing than actually throwing the kick. Have fun with it. Be safe. Swati Cup, my name is Alex Gong, team captain for the Fairtex Muay Thai team here in San Francisco, California. Today we're going to be demonstrating how to land the straight knee, the tang, what they call in Thai boxing in Thailand uh, vocabulary. The, the tang is one of the primary fighting weapons. We use this in a fight method called walking, moving forward. And we're going to have different ways we can put this in countering and uh, offensive technique. Pay close attention to the footwork and how we keep our hands up when we're stepping forward to land the attack. <laughs> now we're going to practice how to land or how to go through the mechanics of the straight knee. Practice this slowly. Make sure you have the, the, the range of motion down first. Like a lot of our techniques in Thai boxing, it emphasizes staying very tall. As you notice, I'm going to step forward with my lead leg, kneeing with my right leg. My lead leg is going to stay up on his balls of the feet, almost completely extended upwards. Fighting stance. I'm going to step forward right at first, and every time I make an attack, I'm going to breathe out. Emphasize good breathing. If, uh, just in case I were to get hit, my body would be able to absorb the, the shot better. Fighting stance, watch me at first. I step in. One, two, and three. Shh. Slowly at first. Now my knees need to come straight in, not up. I'm going to drive my force and my contact directly into the target, just like if I was punching in like this. Not like an uppercut, but straight in. Now watch again with my right leg. I'm going to drive my knee in and forward. Right back, good. Lean back a little bit so your weight thrust, but don't lean too far. Again, one, good. Two, good. Try it with me if you want. Do it slowly. Fighting stance. One, two, three. Now notice every time I make contact or throw my knee, I make contact in that same area. And that's what you want to do is build repetition so no matter what, if you're in the first round or the fifth round, your body knows where to go. You don't get tired and start dropping your knees, hitting in the following area. You want to bring your target, your knee right above the hip bone, right about here into the, the gut of your, your, tar your opponent. Body stance. Now watch me from the side view. My knee is going to come straight in and straight back. Look at my heel as it comes up towards my, my rear. Fighting stance again. One. And right back. Two. Three. Now what we're focusing on is just a straight knee, going straight in and straight out. Straight in and straight out. When we're working with partners and pads and we're fighting, we try to use our hands to, to pull in our target. When this is a strategy that works primarily with somebody who's taller than the person they're fighting. You have an advantage to using your knees when you're taller. One more time. One. Good. Now we've already learned the right knee. When we do the lead knee, it's a little bit different. We're going to have to change our step work, our footwork, right before we step in. 
We're going to switch with our right leg, cocking our left leg back and driving forward. And come right back to our original stance. Get into that habit. If you're going to throw your left side or your lead side, throw it and come back to that stance. Plank stance, throw it again and come right back. Throw it again and come back. The reason why we come back is this is the stance that you feel most comfortable to attack and defend. So get right here, prepare yourself for the next uh, scrimmage that might occur with your opponent. <laughs> with me right now is John Zanong Fairtex, and we're going to practice showing you some drills to land the tang. The tang is a straight knee, and I want you to emphasize and bringing the knee straight into your target. Not upwards like an uppercut, but straight in. Now, now we have another element. We have our hands to try to come into our target and pull them in. So watch me at first, so I land the right knee, I'm going to step into Jonestown, trapping his arms, positioning my right knee so I can attack. Notice how it's very straight and put, cocked back. Well, I, when I knee, I don't just bring the knee forward, but also pull the body in at the same time. So two forces meet and collide. Watch, and again, I step in and bang, right back to fighting stance. Again, a little bit faster, bop, bam, bop, bam. Now we do this a little bit back and forth just so we have a good rhythm and build the momentum and timing of this. Fighting stance, Jones will come into me. Good. So make sure you get used to stepping on your the balls of your feet and stepping forward. Again, you all got to be careful when you step forward so you don't walk in that line of fire. So one of the ways, again, is by using your hands to trap your opponent's right hand or left hook punch. Okay? Now working with the lead leg, the lead leg, now we have to change our position. Just like we did in all other techniques, we're going to switch positions, stepping forward with our rear leg, changing and cocking back the left leg, which, which is now the second leg. Ready? I step in forward and knee. Slowly, I step, position, grab, look how my back leg is cocked, and I knee at the same time, pulling and kneeing. One more time. John Sound come back at me, we'll do this a few more times. Good. That is the, the left tang, left straight knee. Again, watch out for the center line punch. Now notice these weapons that we're throwing right now are offensive techniques. We're going to, towards our opponent. We're going to make the attack. Okay, if you're going forward, make sure that your guard is tight. You want to protect your chin, the most important thing of all. So keep the guard tight when you're walking in. Now we're going to use the tang for a little bit different attack. We're going to counter with it. Maybe Jones and I are going to throw a right punch at me. I'm going to parry his arms kind of the same way, but I'm meeting his technique. So he throws a right punch, one, two, three. Okay, same thing. Go slowly at first and then pick it up as it goes. One, two, three. Parry, step forward, and knee. Bang. Go through it slowly at first. You want to be safe with your partner. Make sure that you don't knee upwards into the groin area. Be safe. Fighting stance again. One, two, three. And I do it back and forth. Okay? Now we do it together. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Now, we, after making contact, work with your partner. Make sure that you just don't get yourself lazy and put your arms down. Fighting stance, watch. I make contact with Jones and Ong. I practice in the classroom is the way I'm going to fight in the gym. I let go. I just don't let my arms down. I'm in the fighting mentality. I've got to keep my game, game strong. Work with your partner smartly, but condition your mind as well as your body. So we're going to do an attacking drill. Step back in your fighting stance. Okay. So now we've stopped the right punch coming in at us. Now we're going to do this, the left side with the left hook. So we've already done right punch. Now as Jones Nong steps in with the left hook, I'm going to defend with the left knee. Fighting stance again. Step in, left hook. Slowly. Left. Left hook. Pop. Notice how my, my guard keeps it here. I step in and pull. Okay, nice and slow again. Pop, block, grab, knee. Good. A little bit faster now. Pop. Good. Notice how when we knee, we're pulling in. The knee and the, the body 
meet to, meet the target. As I pull in, I drive forward. Good. One more time. Good. Pick it up as you go, but start slowly. Understand the range and the, and the motion. Now, for advanced students understanding this technique, they can add to it by repositioning. For instance, Joan Sung is going to throw a left hook. We defend by the same thing, move, drive the knee, and reposition. Now, when I do this, I'm trying to put my opponent in a position where they can't defend and I can attack. So now I have good control. I have his arm and I have his neck. From this position, I'm going to step out 45 degrees. Notice how my right leg goes 45 degrees, keeping my chin protected so I can't get hit with an uppercut. I have reposition and knee. <laughs> Again, we'll go through this slowly. Jones and I steps in with a right hook, left hook. Bang, I block, step in, knee. From here, I reposition. Okay. One of the things when you're trying to land a knee is you'll be more successful at landing a knee if your opponent is off balance. So one of, one of the reasons why we, we turn our opponent before we knee sometimes in, in advanced training is to get them off balance. Now we're going to go into some tie pad training using the straight knee. <laughs> All right, let's do some pad training, we're focusing on the tang, the straight knee. We're going to start off slowly doing one technique at a time, but it's important before you even get started that you understand the safety of holding tie pads. Okay? Again, you're going to be going at the, where, where the knee's going to be throwing is right at your body, so you want to make sure to protect your groin area because you're holding the tie pad at that area. Watch my body position and use this body position to protect yourself. Look at me. When I hold the tie pads, I always want to keep myself, or any type of time I'm holding tie pads or pad training, keep myself in a fighting position. One, it protects me. Two, it gets me conditioned for a real fight scenario. And that's what we're always training ourselves, not just physically, but mentally preparing ourselves for the professional world title fight. Fighting stance, look at my body. Now when I hold the tie pads, I'm going to keep my butt up in the air so I'm not flush like this. Notice how my, my back is backwards. And if I hold the tie pad here, if my, my partner goes deep with his knee, he hit me in the groin. So I stick my butt up a little bit, and I carry the tie pad low. Now, at first, John Sung is just going to step in, straight knee, right with his, with his right leg into my arm. One, two, three. Bam. Good. Fighting stance. One, two, three. Bam. Good. Breathe out every time. And if you want, you can hold, use two tie pads to hold the power down. Advanced, advanced trainers use one, and as you feel comfortable, use two. Ready? Fighting stance. One. Bang. Good. Left side. Bang. Good. Right side. Bang. Good. Sometimes you can double it up, too. Just get your guy used to it, getting used to the range. But make sure that their knee is not coming up, but straight in. Two times, two knees. Bang. Bang. Good. Now this is a long knee on the left side. Same thing. Good. Notice how he keeps his, his uh, support leg nice and tall. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. John Song is going to use his arms to pull me in as he throws his right knee. Body stance and go. Good. Other side. Go. Good. Straight knee. So notice, when he makes his knee, he's not just kneeing, he's putting his arms and his knees together, making two, two forces me. Doubling the power. Fighting stance again. Let's go. Same thing. Go. Good. Again. Good. Now, what we can do to add to the training of this is start adding techniques as though I were attacking. So he has to counter my punch. So I throw a right punch. He parries it. Good. Notice how he grabs and positions the neck. Again. A little faster. Good. Same thing. One more time. The right hand parries. Position. Good. One of the more powerful weapons in Thai boxing. Now we're going to use the same thing, attack with the left hook. On his hands. Good. Notice how the belly pad protects me in case I were to miss a shot with the tie pad. Good little protection. Be safe all the time. If I get injured in training, tomorrow I'm not going to be here to help train my co-workers, my co-partners. Fighting sets again, same thing, left hook. Good. Right punch. Left hook. Right punch. Good. Some of the basic drills that you can do to make your straight knee strong. 
Now what Johnson and I am going to do for 30 seconds is give you some overall training that we do as an attacking defense or attacking drills for tie pads. Now this is advanced, advanced level, so take your time learning this. Excellent. Advanced techniques. Take your time with this. One of the things with tie pad drills we try to create is that real fight scenario. So take your time with this. Be safe. Bang. Bang. Great. Well, now we work some of the techniques used to practice the tang, straight knee. We did some pairing drills. We did some basic straight knee moves and, and shadow boxing. When you use the tie pads, be very, very careful with it. It's a very powerful weapon. Practice this slowly, like all the techniques, and add an incrementally into your, your fighting weaponry. Take your time with it. Be safe. Thank you. Swati Cup. My name is Alex Gong, head, co head coach for the Fairtex Muay Thai team. Today we're going to work on knee clinches and basic concepts. We have five basic clinches that we use in Muay Thai. One is for kip, is the first one for, used for tall people. Second one is kung, used for De good defense for strong defensive attacks. The other one's called Lakan. And, and you know, it's not necessarily important to understand the Thai names, but understand how the techniques work. And it's good for somebody who has good hands. We, we apply these te different techniques and we'll go through the strategies, how we apply them. Then this fourth one is called Luxam, and it's good for somebody who's, uh, who's really strong with knees, they want to apply a lot of combinations with it. And the fourth one is Lakdip, and that is good for somebody who is a shorter person. There's different strategies for different people, and that, that's one thing that makes Thai boxing really strong. We don't say that everybody has to follow the same format. If you're a shorter person or a taller person or a heavy kick or a smooth fighter, you have different ways of fighting. And that's what's important about, about Muay Thai is to find your own way of fighting. And we're going to work with Joan Sanang Fairtex today on different techniques and the mini clinch. Bang. Bang. All right, knee clinches. Now we're going to work on some basic fundamental rules to knee clinching really important. It's a different type of fighting. Now you're working with close range fighting. You're not at the kicking range, you're not at the punching range. You're at really close. You're in the grab range. You got to be careful. When you're in this range, you're very susceptible to elbows, so your guard has to be tight. When I clinch somebody, my footwork is going to change. You're going to see with Jonas and I. Now we're going to start changing up our stances. First of all, now a very important factor is to keep our body always on the balls of the feet. This is very important in knee clinching because you're dealing with b balance. And when you're training in knee clinch, you're working on making your balance better. Very, very important for tie boxing and clinching. Okay? So notice how now my, my footwork is a little bit different. Normally, I stand in my normal fighting stance right here. And the reason why we don't do that in, in tie boxing is if somebody stands with their leg forward and we grab with them, they're very susceptible to be turned because their balance will pull them out. So we keep our body, we keep our body even. You see, notice both legs are almost like in a horse stance. And it, w the way I prevent myself from getting pushed from left uh, front to backwards is I lock. I always lock onto my opponent's body. So I use their support, their legs, to keep my body balanced. All right? Now, we're going to get right into some di basic concepts with clinching. There's five different clinches we're going to teach today, but right now we're going to work on the fundamentals. Now, there's two types of knees we're going to do when we do the clinch knee. One is a straight knee that comes straight back, and you've already done this is the straight knee, comes straight in into your target. But sometimes you don't have the room to make that knee, so you're really clinched in tight. And that's how Johnson has got himself really close to me. And that's something, as a strategy, he wants to stay focused on. Because if he's tight like this, it's hard for me to knee him. If he keeps his body really tight, it doesn't give me much room to power up and give a hard shot. Don't forget, your knees are very, very powerful. They have a hard, a hard weapon to attack with. Okay, so this is, makes it very difficult to straight knee. The second knee that we attack with is called the outside knee. We bring it on the outside and we make contact with the ball of the knee here and bring it down right into the target. So we might come bring, swinging our hip up and coming in right into the contact area. Wherever we want to hit the body or the thigh, mostly the body, we're going to make contact with the inside bone. But when you're working with your partner in training, 
You're training, so you don't want to bang your friends up. Hit with the inside thigh. Watch me at first. Okay, this is where I want to make contact. I fight, I make contact here. When I train, I use the inside thigh. Okay, again, I'm going to grab and I just, boom. That's how I train. Okay, again, training is, boom. You want to avoid hitting here when you're training with your partners. You bang them up, they're going to get you back for it, for sure. Okay, so like I said, we have five types of clinches we're going to work on. The first clinch is really good for somebody who's taller. We're going to go both left and right and watch how we switch in and out. Okay, it's, it, this is a good technique for somebody who's tall. They have an advantage to clinching on. So the first one's called keep. Watch me at first. I'm going to grab. Both of my arms are going to be clinched down inward. My hand is going to be wrapped around his neck, so if I have gloves on, it's going to be tight here. My forearms are going to clinch in, and my elbows are going to try to meet. Well, I've got to be careful of getting elbowed myself, so I'm going to keep my head down at all times, chin down. i also got to be careful of uppercuts. Maybe if I keep my arms wide like this, and John Song decides to uppercut, boom, I get hit. So I keep my chin protected. Now if he tries to uppercut, uppercut, my body's protected, okay? So the first one we're going to do is the, is the cape. This is really good for somebody who's taller. I can use my weight to pull down on it and watch the first knee we're going to do is I'm going to turn, step over, watch how my leg steps over 45 degrees. I'm going to turn my, my, my opponent to position them off balance. Bop, and then I'm going to strike knee, straight knee, side knee, okay? Then I turn to the opposite side, reposition, see how my leg is, straight knee, side knee. Okay, notice when I train, it comes this way, not with the bone. Okay, Jones Song is going to switch, do the same thing to me, come on the inside, bop, repositions, one, two, one, two, good. And that was, again, that was, is the keep, this is really good for somebody who's, who's, uh, who's shorter than you, you notice how my weight can come straight down, okay? Again, focus on keeping the chin protected, very, very important. Keep your body close. Avoid being far away from this, holding somebody, because maybe I, I'm this w far away and I have them, and he knees me first, boom, before I get to knee him, so I might take a hard shot. Keep your body close. So right before I knee, then I reposition. Bop, bam, bam, okay? Now, the, the second knee, is really good for defense. It's a defensive drill, okay? Fighting stance. Now, this is called Kung, okay? We're gonna grab from the outside. Notice again, my legs are gonna be balanced here, and I'm going to keep my, my guard grabbing, grabbing his arm right here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, on the outside here. Pushing on the palm, with my palm or the forearm on his bicep, okay? Same thing like I did before. I'm gonna keep the body close, keep my chin down, I'm gonna turn him out, turn, bam! Switch, bop, and John Sang will switch with me. Watch how he comes on the inside, repositions, gets control of the neck and body, and turns out, turns out the arm, pivot, knee, bop, repositions, watch how his arm turns my neck out, knee, one, two. Okay, again, I come on the inside, always keeping something strong, watching my balance, Repositioning, bang, bang, good. Okay, be careful when you're working with your partners. Uh, knee sparring takes a lot of time to get used to, so do this slowly and keep, try to do it every day with your partner. We, at Fairtex, we do it 20 minutes a day at least with all of our boxers. The third one is Lak Han. Okay, now this is good for somebody who's really good hands. Say Jong Sang is a powerful boxer. He comes in at me, bang, boom. I'm gonna lock him here. And this is how my arm locks his arm here. I still control the neck, and one of the primary things we try to do is control the neck. The body follows the neck, you control the neck, you control the body. The first thing we're gonna do is step out, reposition. Again, notice how I stepped out 45 degrees, stepped over, and I pivoted with my back leg, pulling him across, one knee, two. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, switching, switching where, holding, stepping out 45 degrees, repositioning the body, knee, me. Joe Sang's gonna switch it and get him on the inside. Okay? He's gonna switch the arms, blocking, turning, knee. One, two. Switch, knee, knee. Good. Okay? So be careful when when someone when you hold somebody, because they're gonna try to jockey for position. And that's one thing it takes experience and timing. Do this a lot, it'll take a while before you get to start off slowly, one step at a time. The fourth one is Laksam Lim. 
Now this is good for somebody who's really strong knees. Okay? Maybe they've gone from a position like this, and now they want to reposition. They want to lock on really tight. One reason why they might want to lock on this position is because you can land multiple knees. Maybe you, they feel really strong doing this. So they come right in, and they're going to grab here and pull in. See how my body's just locked right in? And I'm turning sideways. Up, one, two. Okay, I might reposition. Whoop. One, two. And so time we'll come in. Coming on the inside. Oh, see how he locks down here? Pull straight across. He's at 45 degrees. One, two. Okay, look how my arm's here. It's not really easy for me to land a shot in back at him. And he grabs control, turns. Notice how his body turns out. Uh, it gives me not many areas to move. This is good for somebody who's really strong and they want to lock a position and not give up any space and they want to land multiple knees. Usually when they get in, as soon as you get locked in this position, you lock, they start throwing three, four, five knees at a time. Bam, bam, they turn, bam. This is when they go crazy, okay? One thing, we'll, as the tapes advance, we'll show you more of the defenses and how to get out of these. Right now it's basic to get the elementary attacks down. Locked IP, our fifth clinch that we're going to work on. Now this is really good for somebody who's shorter and this is something that we actually might not need the body, but we might need the legs when we get into that position. Okay, fighting stance, I might be in a fighting stance. John Song tries to make a, an attack from my neck, a grab up. He goes to my body, and I flip that in, turn, one, two, three. Understand? Okay, we're gonna go a little bit slower. Okay, he comes in to grab my neck. I block, he comes to the other side. Boom. I come in tight. Turn, one, two, three. Okay, again, I'll show you me attacking John Song. I go to grab him, pop. He comes in, good body. Up, oh, turn, and boom, boom, boom. He's in a position where it's hard for me to get him. One of the things you have to be careful is tuck your head in tight so they can't get you with the uppercuts. Okay? That was the fifth and final uh, clinch. There's a lot more to working with clinches than we've shown you today. Start off slowly. Be very careful. Don't hurt your partner. Hit with the balls. Don't hit with the balls of the knees. And when you're uh, training, use the inside thigh. When you fight, make sure that you're hitting with the with the uh, the uh, knee knee bone. Okay, go safely with your partner, and you'll get this. All right, clinch work. We just worked on. We did the five clinches. Fairtex is known as a knee camp. We do a lot of training here. The United States really needs to train to get the the, uh, the caliber of the knee training up, and it's just done through one step at a time. Going through one of these one of these techniques one by one, training it every day, and implementing it to your system. It takes a while to learn this. The most important thing, understanding and uh, the knee clinch is the balance and positioning of the body. Okay, a lot of it, a lot of the attacks are more successful when you have strong position. When you have the, your opponent in a position where they can't defend correctly, and that's what you want to work on the most. Take your time with this. Be uh, be safe with this, and practice every day. Sweaty cup. My name is Alex Gon, head coach for the Fairtex Muay Thai fighting team. Today we're going to be working on the basic techniques of elbow, position, and strikes. We're going to work on it with Jones Fairtex, Fairtex, doing pairing drills, some pad work, and bag work. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, now we're going to start working on the basic elbows. Let's get into a fighting stance. Let's assume that you're in a right, uh, right, uh, right fighting stance. If you're southpaw, switch your stance. Do everything opposite that I'm explaining. Keep your guard up. When you're fighting with elbows, it's a dangerous game. If you elbow somebody, they want to elbow you back. So make sure you keep your guard up. It's really important. This is not something you can exchange shots with. It's too, too hard of a contact. The elbow point is right in that hard bone shot. That's where you want to make contact with your elbow every single time. In Thai boxing, we, con con we consider our elbows like knives. When they make contact to the head area, they cut, then they make cuts in the face. So make sure you keep your guard up. You don't take shots on the top of your head. You block with your forearms all the time. So you want to keep your guard here. If I'm in, con in distance to elbow somebody, I'm in the third zone and really close to them. Your elbow and knee range. Be careful. I elbow somebody, they want to elbow me back. It's just the nature of the fight game. Let's go right into our basic hand position. Keep the guard up, the chin down. Really good footwork, tight balance, body switching between the left and right. Hands up, nice and tall. Okay, the first elbow we're going to work on is the right elbow. It's to come, come straight across, coming right down. But notice when I step forward, I make contact with my elbow point and my shoulder is protecting my chin. 
My left hand doesn't move. I keep myself really tight. I like elbows, especially for self-defense on the street. I can keep my guard strong and still make contact without exposing vulnerable areas, especially my chin, nose, eyes. These are the areas that's very important to protect. Finding sense again, the first elbow, we're gonna step in, pivot a little bit, bring the shoulder up, and strike down. Let's do it again. One, come right back. Finding stance, guard tight. Two, notice how when I make a, make a strike, that I keep my supporting, my rear leg stiff and pushing up on the ball of the feet. Stepping in, step forward, gives me momentum. One, come back, bounce up, two, bounce again, three, each time I step forward, okay, fighting stance again, same thing off, off the rear elbow, we're going to do a different angle, so now we come straight across, we're going to come straight out over the top a little bit, so here's the guard of um, somebody, I'm going to come right over the top, stepping in, one, and come right back, as soon as you make your elbow strike, Come back to your original stance. Ask yourself, can you attack, can you defend from that position? Fighting stance, looking straight through. Look down a little bit, stay close. Two, three, good. Now third elbow we're gonna do on that same side is the upward elbow. This comes straight up between the guard. Notice how my guard is, is open right here. Okay, we're gonna come straight up the center. Okay, let's do it together, stepping forward and thrust. Bring your hand right beside the outside of the right of your head and straight up. Pivoting your left, left shoulder backwards. Finding sense again. Watch how my shoulder comes forward and my left shoulder goes back. One, two, three. Good. So now we've seen three different elbows on the right side. First one, forward, over, and under. Good. Under. Good, three different types of elbows. Finding stance, again. Now let's do that on the lead, lead arm. Stepping in, the same mechanic. Step in, one. Okay, watch as I step across. I don't go low and leave my chin exposed. I keep my shoulder up high and protecting my chin. See how tight that is? Excellent, so one, two, three. One, two, three. Good, so now we've learned three basic elbows. Now we're gonna do one advanced elbow today. Be careful when throwing this. Practice this just to have this in your curriculum, but focus on the basics. It's dangerous because you can leave yourself vulnerable for the counterattack. Fighting tense, now we're gonna throw a spin elbow. I'm gonna step across our lead leg, 45 degrees, going straight across the opposite direction, and we're gonna come across to the center. Okay, again, watch it first. Fighting stance, one. Two. Look how my body's going forward. I'm almost going to turn my body completely the opposite way and turn. Let's do it in faster motion. Fighting stance, step over, right there. It's important to get back in that original fighting range as soon as you make contact. Okay, now we're going to work with Johnson on a couple different pairing drills and how to apply these with attacks and defenses. <laughs> All right, we've worked on some of the basic movements for the elbow strikes. Now I'm going to show you how we can apply those in different pairing drills. But first, I'm going to show you the distance, how, how we did those basic techniques in the air. Now we're going to do them on a, on a target with John Sanang. Okay? With John Sanang, first I'm going to show you how I'd step in with the basic elbows that we did. Again, be careful. When you elbow somebody, they can elbow you back. I can't emphasize that anymore. It's, too it's so dangerous to be fighting with elbows. You've got to keep your guard very strong. Okay? Guard up. If your guard's tight, though, it's not easy to, el to land elbows. It's not that easy, okay? So be comfortable, but be confident of your guard. First elbow, we're going to show you this. First elbow comes straight across this way, okay? John Sung's going to guard up, straight across. Bop. Bop. The second one is going to come over the top a little bit more. Same angle, but instead, now we're coming over. So maybe I've thrown this elbow at first. Now I notice that he's adjusted to it, and I come straight over the top. Bong. Here. Again, straight over the top and down. One more time, straight over the top and down. Okay, he might adjust by putting his hands up. Now I might notice that he's adapted to blocking from the side and the top. Now I'm going to come straight up the center, right up here. Okay, again, it's coming straight in. Bang. Same thing with the left lead arm. Straight across the original original elbow. Straight across. Bang. Keep your chin down. Funny stance. One. Two, 
Third one, second one I'm going to do is coming over the top again, straight down on top of the hand. One, two, three, good. Fourth one, or third one, I'm sorry, will be the upper, upper elbow on the lead hand. This is what's done a little bit more often than the rear upper elbow is the lead one. I'm going to step in. As they step in at the same time, I'm lifting straight up. Try to avoid exposing your chin as you come in. This is what you want to avoid, and it's a common mistake. Fighting stance, head, head down, chin down, guard up, step in, elbow. Step in, elbow. Notice how my leg steps straight in. Okay, good. Now the, the, the final elbow we're going to show is the spin elbow. We're going to step over, look at my guard. My shoulders and hips are straightly lined with zone sedang. I'm in a really close guard. Notice how like we're in zone three, or zone one. Really close, 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 close fighting. I'm going to step over 45 degrees. My lead leg is going to go on the outside. I'm going to spin straight across and come right over. Again, fighting stance. I step over and spin. Notice how my shoulders are parallel to his, looking forward. Okay, it's almost like I just turned 180 degrees around. Fighting stance again. I step over. Bang. The final, final way you can adjust this is a little bit of movement with the elbow to make it come upward. And so we've come across now, and we're going to do a little bit of adjustment. Instead of coming across, we're going to come straight up underneath the guard. Okay? I don't recommend you do this too much. It's very dangerous. If you miss your shot, you're in a bad position for the counter. If they grab you and knee you or elbow you back, which they always want to do, it's a funny thing. You elbow somebody, that kind of pisses them off, and they want to elbow you back. So be, be aware of where you are in that position. Okay? Great. Now we're going to start doing some pairing drills and how to apply these. Okay? Fighting stance at first. So Jones and I, we might be in a, in a walking position, and Jones Zong is coming in to throw a jab straight combination at me. I guard, one, two, and then fire right back. Again, he does it again. One, two. I notice that first time he blocks, so this time I come over the top. Bam. Comes again, one, two, bam, bam. I come up in the center. Same type of concept. Same, same thing on the other side. One, two, bam, bam. Hold my guard, boom, strong. Comes again, one, two, up on the top, boom. Last time, comes in, one, two, bam, bam. straight up the center. Boom. Okay? Watch your guard. Another way you can use these defenses at the same time, maybe your Johnson steps in with a hook to my body. Boom. Elbow at the same time. That's what's commonly used when they throw that uh, fr uh, front, that lead roundhouse elbow. Okay? Again, he's going to throw a hook to my body. I see him moving over to that way. As soon as I see some type of movement on there, I try to make contact at the same time. So when he makes contact with his punch, his head makes, meets my elbow at the same time. So it's Two forces that meet, doubling the power. Again, I see him step over and bang. Same thing on the other side. Does a hook with his right, bang. The left, bang. The right, bang. Okay. Be careful when you're working with elbows. Take your time with it, especially when you're doing knee clinching and bag work, and you're staying close in that close range. Think of those elbows. Remember, somebody hits you once time, it can really make a lot of damage. So keep your guard up. Okay? When you're shadow boxing, just go through it. Go through the motion. This is not something that we spar with because there's a lot of damage with elbows. So we have to practice on heavy bags, on pad work, and just light pairing drills. We don't do sparring with this. We don't be knocking out people in our sparring drills. All right? Well, now John Strong and I are going to work on some different pad training drills that were used in Thai boxing elbow training. And let's get ready to go. <laughs> All right, now John Strong and I are going to work on pad training with the elbows. When we were working the elbows, we don't just throw the elbows. We want to set it up. To land the elbow in Muay Thai, it's important to have movement, to be able to use the rhythm of your boxing or your other weapons, your knees, your kicks, to set them up. Right now, we're going to work on some boxing techniques to set up our, hand, our elbows. Again, it's not necessarily easy to throw an elbow because you're far away with that technique unless it just lightly slips in. Especially coming in from a long range distance, it's hard to land an elbow. So we're going to do some drills. Pay attention slowly. Uh, pick it up and implement it into your training. Be very, very careful when you do the elbows. If you're training somebody or working with a partner, help each other stay focused, keeping the guards up, remind each other, keep the hands up, use the shoulders to protect the chins. Okay, we're going to get started. Okay, first we're going to do a combination, jab, elbow. Jab, elbow. Jab, elbow, good. Again, one more time, jab, Elbow. Now notice how as he comes in, the first time he comes in, he's stepping in, bop, he makes, he makes up the distance as he's coming in. That's why his first jabs 
has him step in, and he does the second one, he's close enough to make range. So a lot of times we use that, that jab elbow combination to, to close in the distance. Okay, again, one last time. One, two, good. Now the second one we're gonna do is a combination. Jab, hook to the body, elbow. Wow. Okay, again, we're setting up movement, we're trying to get our target to, to reposition their body to shift from one side to the other. Okay, again, combination. One, two, three. Good. Start off slowly and you'll pick it up. We'll do it a couple of times and you'll see how the rhythm builds. Go. Bop, bop, bop. Now go a little bit faster. Bop, 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 bop. Good. Make sure you have power with your elbows. It's not a technique you, you throw lightly. Make sure it's strong. One last time. Go. Bop, bop, bop. Good. Okay. One more time. Bop, bop, bop. Good. All right. Now, the next one we're going to throw is a hook. We're going to block it and throw, throw the uh, elbow, uh, a right elbow right away. Fighting stance. As I step in to throw a hook to Jonesong, he makes up the distance and steps forward right in using that center line to slide in on. Look how my arm gives him an opportunity to slide in. So the hook comes in and he comes right in down the pipe. Okay, again. Fighting stance. Bop. Bam. Good. Again. Bop. Bam. Important, it's very important for his balance to be strong. If, I, if his balance is weak and I hit him with a heavy punch, even though he's blocked, he can't make his shot. His balance has to be very strong. Again, going back to the fundamentals of Muay Thai, that's why it's very important to have that first initial stance strong. Okay, one last time, you step in. Bam, bam, good. Okay, another way we might do this is if I jab straight at John Sang, he holds his fighting guard in a nice helmet position and fires back right away. Bam, bam. Bang, 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 bang. Now this is something you can do with your, your partners in training or your students if you're teaching a class. The last one we're going to do is a little bit fancier elbow. It's a spin elbow. We're going to set it up with the jab. John Sung said jab, spin elbow. Bang. Well, look how he stands over, steps across my body. One, two, good. So this might work. If he throws a right punch, a, a jab, and I would have thrown a punch coming into him, and he steps in, and bam, that's where the shot would land. Okay? Or maybe he jabs, and I throw a knee, bam, I walk right into it. Okay? That's why it's important for him to step out. One last time. Bam, bam. Good. All right. Thank you, Johnson. <laughs> Great. Well, we've worked on the elbows. We've worked on the basic foot position, hand position, the three types of elbows, and the spin elbow. Uh, working with the pads and partners is very, very important. I can't emphasize this enough to stay completely safe. Make sure that you don't go through your, your technique too much when you're working with a partner. If you really want to work on power, do the heavy bag work and do some uh, shadow boxing. We'll help you get the range of motion with this. Uh, I, I can't emphasize enough. Be very, very careful. If you're fighting with somebody and you're trying to apply your elbows, remember, if you elbow somebody, they want to elbow you back. And this I can tell you from experience. Okay. When you elbow somebody, they want to elbow you back. So keep your guard up. Be prepared. The elbow is going to come right back right away. It's, it's an it's a instinctive thing. Somebody gets punched, they, they're hungry to punch somebody back. They get elbowed, they want to elbow you back. It's kind of a payback theory in fighting, but it's true. And people are going to do it back to you, so be aware of it. Be safe. Train hard. Fighty Cup. My name is Alex Gong, head coach for the Fairtex Muay Thai fighting team. Today we're going to work on defense. One of the primary training tools for Muay Thai, defense is essential. A lot of people don't understand how important defense is in Muay Thai. They see it as a primary offensive art. If you understand the true nature of Muay Thai, you understand its importance of defense. They use a lot of powerful shots in Muay Thai, and if you're not able to defend against them, you'll be taken down quickly. Having a good foundation of defense will enable you to grow as a fighter and be able to be prepared for the professional fighting ring. Today we're going to work on three types of defense. Hard defense, soft defense, and offensive defense. Let's get ready to go. Excellent. Now we're going to work on hard defenses, and we're going to work with the basic attacks. Kick to the body, kick to the leg, one, two, jab straight punches, uh, and hook. Okay, this is some basic offensive attacks that will come at you. Understanding the hard defenses for the attacks will get, get you going for basic Muay Thai. Now, 
First of all, when we do a block, we're going to work on blocks to the body at first. When we do a block to the body, it's coming right at our body at 45 degrees. So we want to meet that block. And that's what exactly what hard defense is. We're meeting an attack. We're defending very hard. We're not going to them. We're letting them come to us, but we're going to hold our ground and give them hard contact areas to defend against, fighting stance. So in, in a way, we want them to have pain or some type of uh, payback for making an attack on this. I want them to feel it when they hit me. Fighting stance. Now first, you notice how my body's balanced. I'm not, shift, I'm not leaning to one side or the other like this. In order to block to the left or right, we have to keep our weight balanced, shifted from one side to the other. Okay, I keep my hands up. Notice how high my hands are. They're not like down by my chin like this. They're really high, almost in a helmet guard. Okay, but a little bit relaxed, hand, hands up by the chin, elbows at 45 degrees. Now first again, I'm going to block on my, right, my left side, a body kick, which would be a right kick from an attacker. I'm going to meet my, my, bring my shin out 45 degrees, bringing it out like this. But notice I don't go out. I let it come right into me. Okay, first I'm going to meet my shin come 45 degrees. So the contact defending area would be right here. Okay, fighting stance again, watch. So I block it, shh, and back down into my original stance. From this original stance, I can defend again or I can attack. It's really important. Okay, what I want to do is bring the knee to the inside of my elbow, like this. Not on top, because I'll charlie horse myself. This way right here, I can create a strong guard, almost like a wall of defense that's unpenetrable. Fighting stance again, watch. Shh, nice and strong. Okay, if I want, I can bring it up to my body to make it a little taller. And that's something I want to keep focused on, keeping my height. I want to try not to bring my body down when a kick comes. I bring my, that way I'm staying away from the power. By keeping tall, they've got to bring their power to me. If I lean into it, it's very dangerous. I could think they're kicking to my body, and they could kick up to my head. It's easy for way to get knocked out. Fighting stance again. Keep my body tall and block. Shh. Elbow to the outside. Block. Shh. Same thing with the right side. I block. Shh. Come back to my original stance. Shh. Both sides. One, two. Good. Now notice how I keep my foot down. You can also keep it up. My, my preference is down. Now what we're going to do is block to the leg. Primarily the same type of defense, except we're not bringing our leg up as high because we have to meet our shin bone right at their shin at the leg level. They're aiming for my calf, or my, I'm sorry, my thigh, and that's exactly where I want to block, right there. Fighting stance. Again, I have to shift my weight and defend. Shift my weight and defend. Shift my weight and defend. Now, with the, with the inside kick to my left leg, if somebody attacks my inside, I can cross over 45 degrees. Okay? We only use the lead leg to defend against a lower kick. If we were to bring it up high like this, you're getting blocked and kicked like this, will bring you off balance. The kick will come and knock you off balance. Something we try to avoid. I can keep my balance strong this way, so it's okay to cross over. Okay, again, so we have outside block to the leg, inside block to the leg. Okay, those are some of your, your basic defenses. A lot of people have seen them, but what's most important is to keep the, the shin bone meeting 45 degrees and not to come out, just to keep your body nice and relaxed and tall. Okay, with the defenses to the head, the hard defenses, keep your hands up and we're going to go what's called a helmet position at first. And we use this a lot of times for straight arm cutting punches, elbows, different attacks. And it's just a nice relaxed stance. Make sure though, no matter what, that when you go into this guard that your body's very strong, that you've keep your body stabilized. Notice how my back leg right here is positioned for, to keep my body stabilized right here. So all the hard attacks come, I can position my legs to take the impact. Now watch what I do with my guard. I want to keep my hands up by my temples and push in my elbows to protect my chin, looking forward through my hands. I want to make sure I don't cover up my eyes because if I cover my eyes, when I go to look again, maybe I get hit with a shot or they've moved, repositioned, and I won't be ready for the attack. Fighting stance again, Let's go on the helmet guard. Right back. Always looking forward and position. Shh. Again, watch from the side. Notice how I position my leg. One, Shh. two, Shh. good. Now we're going to work on hard defense against hooks. It's pretty relaxed, just like we had our hands up. Now if a right hook were to come to our body, we're just going to slide our hands straight up across the side of our head, keeping the other guard right where it was and locking up the defense. Watch me first. One, Shh. two, Three. Good. Now watch from the side what I'll do. If a hook comes, I'm just going to slide my hand up and keep it there. 
It's important to keep the chin protected at all times. That's your vulnerable area of your body. It's the most important part for you to keep protected. And that's what we're working, working with right here. In Muay Thai, especially at Fairtex here at the camp, we emphasize on heavy training, conditioning, so we expect our body to be able to take the shots. We always look to protect our chin, make sure we don't give up that vulnerable area. Now I'm going to work with Jon Sarang on different pairing drills and attacks using hard defenses. Okay, now we're going to work on drills with Jon Sarang and Fairtex here on kicks of the body and hard defenses with several different attacks. Kicks of the body, kicks of the leg, jab straight, elbow, and left hook. Fighting stance again. Now, again, when you position your body, make sure that your body's relaxed, but you're balanced from left to right, you're not sitting with your weight to the left like this. Again, if I keep my weight this way and Jonestown on kicks, he kicks my body, it takes me a long time to adjust. Okay, so I want to keep my body balanced. Maybe if I'm, I'm on my right side, he'll kick on this side. If I'm on my left side a lot, he'll kick on that side. He'll be able to see where my slow, area, slow points will be. So again, keep your weight balanced. And if you're fighting with somebody, you notice their weight shifted to one side. Hit them a lot on that side. Fake and hit that side because you'll land your shot. Fighting stance now. Again, I want to keep my body nice and tall, nice and relaxed, and I don't adjust that much. The only movement it come, when it comes to kick me is my leg. Jones and I kicks me, and nice and relaxed. The only thing you see is my leg move again. Same thing with the left side or my right side. I just keep my body nice and relaxed. Again. Good. Now you can do drills with your partners back and forth. So I kick to Jon Sanang, he blocks, he kicks me back on the same side, we parry it. So do this a couple times. Kick back. Okay, you can do it on either side, left, right. Okay, this is a good drill to work, especially with your beginning students, or if you're new at this with your partner, do this slowly. Pick it up after you get used to it, and then you can start doing drills where I kick, John Sanan kicks back to me, any side, I have to adjust and kick back. So whatever side he wants to kick me on. And just a little drill like this. Helps your body get used to the positioning. Now, same thing with the leg kicks. The, coming down, I just want to keep my body somewhat the same, but I'm not going to bring my leg up as high. Fighting stance again, John Sanan kicks with his right side to my leg, and I just block. Reposition right away. I want to ask myself, can I fire? Can I defend? Fighting stance, he kicks again, one more time. And nice and relaxed. Notice that my body doesn't dip down at all. I stay strong. For the inside leg kick, it's very much the same, except now I'm going to cross over. Again, he kicks it at me. Come right back to your original stance. Again. Good. Okay, Finding stance one more time. Pretty simple with the, the, the blocks. That's why in Thai boxing, leg kicks are very elementary attacks. Very easy to defend against. And John Sanang, if he kicks me with it, or any other fighter kicks me, we're meeting shin to shin. So he's going to have some consequences to kicking me. He has pain, I have pain. If you do this through five rounds of a fight, you know, your legs are going to get very banged up. So that's why you, if you look at some of the high caliber fights, not a lot of fighters throw leg kicks. It's at the beginning level. So it's very easy to defend against. And if you're just learning Muay Thai, really spend the time to understand the defense of leg kicks and body kicks. Okay. Now we're going to go right into the helmet guard against a jab straight combination. So hold your body in normal range. When they step into that boxing range and they throw it in, reposition your body. You're going to step in and just take the shot. But hold your body tight and keep the gloves right on your head. If you keep them out like this and they punch, you punch yourself. Okay. You want to keep it nice and tight. Fighting stance and he comes in and one, two. Bow, bow. And, and you could take quite a bit of power this way. You'd be very surprised. Use your glove pads to protect yourself. I said it again, he comes in, <laughs> good. Now we're going to do a combination of jab straight and we're going to deal with the hook. When you deal with the hook, just come straight up that side, whether it's the left side or right side. Fighting stance again, and <laughs> good. Now two hooks, jab straight, two hooks. <laughs> good. Very, very simple techniques. Keep your guard strong. That's the most important thing. Your body has to be strong. Great. <laughs> Soft defenses, exactly what they sound like, they're soft. You're meeting the attack that might come at you, maybe you're talking about a jab or a straight punch, a lot of times it's more of a pairing. Foot jab might come at you, might pair it out of the way. It's a soft defense, it means we're not meeting them with the hard techniques like we just were with our blocks, our hard defenses. Soft defense is something that you might want to use if you've been injured and, and you're trying to recoup your body for the later rounds. Maybe you just landed a couple, your opponent just landed a couple hard shots 
and you want to keep them away from you and you want to avoid taking any more shots until you recuperate and can fire back on them. Okay, we're now going to work with Joan Sanong on some pairing drills using soft defenses. <laughs> now we're going to do some soft defense and pairing drills with basic attacks with the Muay Thai kicks and punches. First, Joan Sanong's going to throw a, a kick to my leg from the inside and I'm going to do a soft defense. Again, soft defense doesn't necessarily mean I have to make contact. I get out of the way. I'm defending against his attack. That's all I have to do. And you always have to ask yourself at all positions, can I attack and def defend? So right here, my body's very strong. If he keeps a, a kicks from my inside leg, my, a soft defense, counter would be kicks my inside, which would be to pull out of the way. I reposition my body. Every time I reposition, I keep myself in a, a strong stance. From this position, I might be able to fire back. Okay, again. We're not necessarily working on the counters, we're working on the concept of a soft defense, and that's not to take the shot. Okay? You could also do the same thing for the, for the right leg to my leg. Okay, again. Okay, that was the left side. Good, one more time, but on the right. Right, right side. You can do the same thing, just be careful of this. This is not something that we emphasize a lot, because we want to make sure that there's consequences. Nothing's for free. If he kicks me, I want him to feel some type of pain. Difference. No, look at the difference between a hard and soft technique. John Sanon kicks with his right side to my leg, a hard defense, bomb. He feels some type of pain. He knows every time that he hits me, there's going to be a consequence. At least I block or he's going to feel something. If it's a soft defense, nobody feels anything. If you can counter off that, that's great because you reposition yourself. Okay? Uh, using soft defenses for a jab straight combination, okay, they step in. It's just simple pairing. Bop, bomb. Posi reposition your body. Again, now as a combination, jab straight, left hook. Okay. Again, re always reposition yourself for what? Attack or defend. My stance one more time. I parry by repositioning by my body. Watch again as I step out. My hand is going to parry the initial punch slowly at first. Bop. As a right punch comes, steps in, I step out, and I'm out of the way for both straight punches and a shorter range punch like a hook. Good. And that can give me the countering space. Finding stance. Okay, so now we've done a little bit. Now, to the kicks of the head, which one thing I missed, it's the same thing for a soft defense, either left or right, either side. We're going to do a soft defense. This is, called, uh, this is called rocking. Now, watch when I rock. I'm going to bring my body, watching at first, I'm going to bring my right leg straight out to the back, I'm not leaning backwards, but stepping backwards, bringing my head backwards. See how it takes my head out of range? Fighting stance. Joel Sanong's going to kick right leg to my head, and I step right out. Boom. Fighting stance again. One more time. Good. What I want to avoid is bending back all the way like this. So if after he does his first high kick, he doesn't charge me and leave me off balance. At all times, I have to ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself, can I attack, can I defend? If I step back this way, my leg's strong, I can still fire off that position. Okay. Again, with the left side, kick to the head, same mechanics. Boom. That's one reason why it's very hard to land a neck kick. It's easy to get out of the way. It only takes that much movement for me to get out of that range of motion. So understanding attacking, you should know that kicks to the head are very easy to defend against. All right, we've covered hard defenses and soft defenses. We have one more to go, offensive defense. Just like it sounds, we're meeting the attack offensively. This is, we've already covered hard defenses, and again, I'm going to review the hard defenses. When somebody is coming to us, we're meeting them with very hard defenses. Our shin bones, our hard guards, our helmet guards, and we're holding our ground. We're not moving at all when the attack comes. We're holding right in that stationary position. We might do this again to make them feel a little pain when they kick us or to, when they make an attack. Also, we might want to hold that ground so we can counterattack or make an offensive move from there. Okay, the, so the soft defenses, a little bit of the same thing, except now we might not want to take shots, we might not want to block hard, we want to parry it out, deal with an attack without taking a shot. Maybe the guy's bigger than us, maybe he punches really hard, we want to make sure that we don't take any shots or any chances. So we parry the move, and we might use this to counter, reposition our body and counter. The next is the offensive techniques, the offensive defenses, and we're just going to go right into working with Joan Sanong and doing some basic combination attacks uh, using pairing drills. <laughs> Now we're going to work on offensive defensive pairing drills. Just like it sounds, we're going to make an offensive attack when, it, when someone attacks us. First of all, we're going to deal with a right kick to my leg. Jones is going to make a kick to my leg. I'm going to foot jab him. I'm going to meet his technique. So he comes in, straight for a leg kick. Shh. I push him out. Okay, fighting stance again. Okay. He comes in for my leg. I push right in. Shh. 
push up, okay? Position your body, keep your guard up. Try not to drop your guard at all times, okay? You can always make a mistake. You want to keep your vulnerable area protected. Again, same thing. Uh, now we're going to go right into a, a leg kick, I mean a body kick. Say he comes in to kick my right side. Okay, we're going to cut kick right away. This is called a cut kick. We meet his supporting leg. I'm going to step right through and kick his supporting leg. He comes in with a kick to my body. Whoop. Right in away. Step right in. Okay, body sense. Okay, comes in, steps in to kick to my body. I step out, big turn with my leg, kick at the lower part of his leg. Let's go slowly and see it slowly. Steps in, bang, I kick low. Okay, one more time. A little bit slow, and he comes in to kick my body, and I step up, boom. Good. Okay, now a little bit on the defense, uh, offensive. We've not dealt with the leg kick, we dealt with the body kick. Now we're going to deal with a jab straight contact punch. Okay, come here, Jansong. Finding stance, he steps in, one, two, punch, straight in, push, push right out. I meet his technique. Be careful with this because you want to make sure that you don't want to throw your, your foot jab too early and set, set yourself to walk right into the, to his one, two punches. Say, I throw the foot jab, he steps out a little bit, I go early, I go a little bit early or something, and then he steps in, one, two, punch, bang. Okay, your timing has to be on there. He comes right in, one, two, punch, push out. Okay, now that's what we've dealt with, the jab straight. Can foot jab. This is some of the basic techniques you can use for offensive technique. Same thing with the left hook. Now we're going to meet his body. He's going to throw with left hook, strong. Pop. Okay, again, one more time. Throw the strong. Pop. Okay, I'm meeting his body with my open part of my palm pushing onto his shoulder. He comes in, I stop his forward movement, nice and slow at first. Comes in, I pop. So, muscle. Comes in slowly, I push out. Pop. Right here. Keeping my right guard up because I, if the punch does go over, I miss or something, I go over here, I want to make sure that my guard's there to protect myself. Okay, but I just meet him, he comes in, I stop his momentum, bam. Good. Some of the basic techniques you can use for offensive defense. Bam. Bam. All right, now we've covered the three basic defenses, hard, soft, and offensive defense. I want to emphasize that Muay Thai is a highly defensive art, more so than it is an offensive art. If you look at most professional fights, especially in Thailand, most of the shots are defended against. It takes a lot of technique and skill to land good shots against a very experienced fighter. To get up to that level, your Thai boxing defense has to be very strong. Practice slowly and safely, use partners, and learn it, learn it incrementally, and it will work for you. Sweaty Cup, my name is Alex Gong, head captain for the Fairtex fighting team. Today we're going to work on different training drills using shin pads and 12-ounce uh, gloves. I recommend that you use a 12-ounce glove or larger using these drills. Be very safe. Understanding the training drills helps you build the momentum and the footwork and positioning of the, the fight routines that you put in to your, your curriculum. Start off slowly. Build this into your own fighting curriculum. You'll find out what works for you. We're going to do about five to ten different drills for two different types of fighting. And, and there's basically two types of fighting strategies in Muay Thai. And one would be walking or fighting, which we're constantly moving forward, making attacks, not giving up any position. And one we call boxing. Boxing means we come in and out. We fight like a boxer, more or less Sugar Ray Leonard type style. And we're going to go over different scenarios and how you can train these uh, types of fighting styles. Today working with me is Johnson Iron Fairtex. He'll be helping us with different drills that we're doing. And we're ready to get started, so let's go. Bam. Bam. All right, now we're going to work on boxing in and out movement. It's a boxing style, not international boxing with the hands, but we call this boxing style. It's one of the ways that we fight in Muay Thai techniques. Okay, we're going to go through a couple different combinations and drills. Pay attention to our footwork and position. Again, when we're boxing, we want to make sure that we keep what? Our head, our most vulnerable area, away from hard shots and targets. So we make attacks and we come in and out. We try to land shots, let them not land shots, reposition. It's important to have good ring position, to be centered in the ring. Don't get yourself in corners or on the ropes. Okay? Be aware of where your footwork is and how that's your, your ring position. Okay? With me is John Sanang, and we're going to go over a few different techniques. The first one, again, he's going to come in at me, come in and meet me. I'm going to parry his, his technique, his jab. He's going to jab me and put jab him away from me and make position. Okay? So right now, we're in like a zone three, which I always call the zone three fighting stance. As he steps forward, he's coming into a fight range. I either have to hit him or move. That is, that's the option I have. And that's, so we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to deal with his technique. He comes in, jab, foot jab him right away. Right away. Now I've made, I reposition my body and I'm far away. If I have to, I move away and I let him come to me. 
Again, what he's going to do is step in slowly. He's going to jab. I'm going to foot jab and reposition. Okay? If he comes forward again, I can do the same thing, but I constantly want to be aware of my position. One more time, he steps in. I parry, foot jab, come right back. Foot jab right to the body, push all the way out, avoid falling forward. So when he get, one more time, he parries. I want to avoid falling forward like this. Okay? As soon as I foot jab, I reposition my body, come right back to my fighting stance, hands up. Okay? Practice this slowly. You can do this with a partner. You know, work with this for five, ten minutes. Get it down, get it down. Keep your body balanced all the time. The second technique we're going to work on, John Sun's going to step in. I'm going to deal with his, he's invading my space. I'm going to deal with this right away. One thing we like, like to do if somebody's a really forward fighter on us is we like to take their, their forward step out away from them or make them weary of stepping on their leg. So as John Sun steps in right away, he's going to step in. Bop, one, two, three. Boom, I'm going to attack. Again, one more time. He steps in. I'm going to hit the inside leg. One, two, three to the leg and reposition. Notice how after I attack, I step out and hold my ground. Fighting stance again, nice and slow. So he steps in, I kick to the inside leg. One, two, three, combination, follow it up. My body's right here, I step it out, kick to the leg. Go slowly with these techniques again, okay? Now, the, the third thing we're gonna work on is dealing with a right hand. John Song's gonna step in, right hand, I'm gonna reposition my body, bomb, just by stepping out of the way. Again, one more time, he steps in, bop, bam, bam, right back to his body, reposition. Good, uh, kicks are good to use for when you're fighting long distance fighting, keeps your chin away and keeps you away from your target as possible. You, you hit them and move, hit them and move, that's the concept. Fighting stance again, bop, one, two. Let's see that again, watch my rear leg as I step out and reposition. Fighting stance, really important to watch the footwork on this. I keep my guard up in case I make a mistake, and I step over, I want to avoid this. He throws the right punch, bang, and I turn over and walk into it. Okay, watch again. I, don't st I step over wrongly and I turn and I walk right into a right punch. Wow. Wow. Finding sense, I got to step out 45 degrees. Watch my footwork, step out, reposition my right leg. One, two. One more time. Then, hop, <coughs> Okay, go through slowly with this. Make sure you use pads with this and good gloves and good shin pads to protect yourself. You don't want to get banged up when you're training. Okay, great. All right, now what we're going to work on is the uh, fourth combination, pairing the foot jab to the body. Okay, make sure you keep your body balanced. You got to get out of the range. Okay, fighting stance. Jones is going to step forward with his left leg and foot jab to my body. Right away, step out, bang, kick to the body, right back again. And watch, going through this slowly, I want to deal with the attack first. He's coming straight in at my body, so I have to step out of the range a little bit. Stepping straight back. Fighting stance, he comes slowly. I parry the leg, but notice how my back leg steps out. I step out, parry, and now I brought my leg back. I cocked it back, and I step forward, back, and I kick right back right away. Things to avoid, again, is not stepping backwards. Okay, if he foot jabs me and I don't step back, boom, I can get pushed. Okay, I need to step back with that rear leg. Reposition, fighting stance again, he foot jabs, position, and kick. Okay, another thing you want to watch out for is making sure that you have the right range of motion when you parry that foot jab. If I parry it with the right side, he foot jabs me, I, put, I could walk right into a right punch. Bong. Okay, so I, I want to parry my target, oh, my opponent, away from me. As he does the left side one more time, does the left side, notice how it just pushes him away from me. Shh. Okay, very good. Now the fifth and final one, what we're going to do is using the foot jab to keep somebody away from you. When you use the rear foot jab, John Sun's going to attack me, looking to come in, I just reposition. Watch again, he comes in, I bring my back leg backwards and reposition, bringing the knee up tight, keeping that distance. Shh. And you can do this drill Shh. Shh. With, your, your, with your partner, back and forth, okay? Maybe do it five to ten minutes, you'll get this, okay? Keep it slowly, do each technique multiple times. Burn it into your brain, and you'll get it. Use it in your fight curriculum. Well, we just did some of our uh, boxing techniques, in and out movement. Now we're going to go to second style of fighting, walking. I like this style of fighting. It's a forward movement. Your guard has to be very strong. Your defense and your position has to be very, very powerful. Jones and I are going to go through several different techniques and pairing drills. When you're doing these with your partner, be very careful. Start off slowly and pick up the increment speed uh, as you go along. Start off thinking, though, that you're fighting. 
keep that mindset and it'll help you when you go into the ring. Okay? First, what we're gonna do a combination at first, I'm gonna step in, John Sanong's gonna be, I'm gonna be attacking going to him. Okay, fighting stance. Okay, again, what I want to do is deal with the hook again. He comes in with the hook quickly, and I leg kick right away. Okay, fighting stance, nice and slow. Okay. As he comes in for the hook, I guard and push on his shoulder. By pushing on his shoulder, it gives me space to leg kick. If I can get him moving backwards, it makes it harder for him to block. Okay, one more time. My guard is very tight. I'm moving forward all the time. I'm pushing and kicking in. Good. Okay, go with, it, go with your partners with this. Make sure you have good equipment so you're protected when you just use these techniques. The second thing, a lot like, I'm a lot like the first technique, I move, I fake, push out, and leg kick. Okay, again, fighting stance. Here again, I fake, push, leg kick. All right, one last time. Okay, fighting stance, walking forward, walking forward, fake, push, Leg kick. All right, third technique, moving forward. Keep your guard strong. Okay, again, block, right kick, right punch, right away. We're constantly moving forward on the attack. We don't give up space. Now you see I'm backing up to reposition, but if I'm fighting in a ring, I'd be moving forward. If they move that way, I'd follow them that way. If they move that way, I'm hunting them down. I'm going after them. They're my meat and potatoes for the day. Fighting stance again, he's gonna kick at me. I'm gonna block. Right kick, my shoulder's gonna come right over. Right punch. Again, one more time. Fighting stance. Right block. Right punch. Right kick, right punch. Right back to fighting stance. See that one more time. Fighting stance, he comes in at you. Pop, pop, bang. Okay, always moving forward. Great. Okay, the fourth defense, or counter move we can work on. Fighting stance. He's gonna kick, put block. Right punch, left knee. Boom. Let's see that a little faster. Fighting stance, right kick. Bop. Right punch. Bang. Bang. What I want to do is carry the distance forward. He's kicking at me with a, with a long range weapon. It comes forward at me. I have to make up for the distance. I step forward, right punch. Stepping in again, reposition. One, two. Fighting stance again, guard. Okay, one last time. Fighting stance, you can see it. Right punch, I mean right kick to the body, block, right punch, step in, one, two. Come back to fighting stance. Good. Okay, the, the fifth one we're gonna work on today, fighting stance, Jones and I throws his attack. <coughs> okay, what's going on here is we're, we're dealing with a left body kick, we're catching and controlling the leg. Fighting stance, he kicks at my body. I step over, and I catch the leg nice and tight. I hold it up strong. Notice how I don't have it down here. I have it very strong and up. Notice how his shoulders are pointing forward. The higher I keep his leg, the more off balance he is. I step in, one, two, and dump. Three, okay? One more time. Fighting stance. Step in, one, two, and dump. It's all about positioning of the leg, keeping the balance up. One last time. Fighting stance. Grab, one, two. Excellent. These are some drills that you can work on with your partner. Be careful with this. Something if you're working with classes, you can implement in the whole class. I like to do a lot of pairing drills. It makes the timing very strong. Gets, it makes the footwork strong and understand the distance and balance of an attack sequence. <laughs> All right, we've covered a bunch of different training drills ready for doing the boxing style and walking style. Now, to add to our, our training, we're gonna do some pad training. As, as professional fighters train, we don't exactly tell people when to kick and where to kick, when to punch. Exactly like when you fight, no one tells you, kick you now, punch you. They don't tell you when they're gonna kick. And that's the type of training we emulate when we do the pad training. But at the beginning levels, when we're just getting started, it's good to have some direction. So your trainers will call out different shots, working on strategies, helping you implement the training drills that you want to do, your training uh, strategies that you're trying to implement. Okay, right now we're going to work, John Song and I are going to do about a minute or one round of training, just using uh, boxing techniques, in and out movement. 
okay? Keep an eye on how, how we try to keep the distance, but yet keeping power, okay? Fighting stance, don't slung an eye. Shh. Good. So now what we've done is I've kept Johnson on. I make an attack. I keep Johnson on away from me. Attack and defend. Attack and defend. <laughs> now the next step of fighting style we're going to do is walking. Watch how I constantly move forward. So as you see, I'm always making contact moving forward with my opponent. All right, well that was a lot of fun. We just did a bunch of tie pad work with Johnson and I. We showed you two different styles of pad training. One is walking, uh, one was actually boxing, moving in and out, attacking, maybe a punch combination, make a knee attack, then we make distance, hold our ground. We, ho we try to emulate holding the center of the ring, controlling the center of the ring. Now the, the second pad training we did was walking forward, hunting down our opponent, cutting the ring off, keeping them in the corner, keeping their back on the ropes, always on the attack, making them move backwards. 